But I mean, again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. The people of Mecca were pagan. Quran has mentioned if this book was from other than God, they would have found in it many contradictions. If a book is without contradictions, that has no bearing on whether it comes from God or not. I've had phone books that are inerrant, but I certainly don't think God gave them. <laughs> that we believe without understanding. The brother asked a very important question that most of the scholars say that listening to music, watching movies, and most of the television programs, they're haram. So how can we have fun? Let me tell you, brother, at the outset, that having fun is permitted in Islam as long as the fun is halal fun. <laughs> that the standard narrative has holes. The prophet tells us because Satan or the devil sleeps over our nostrils. Those who oversleep and not pray Fajr on time, Satan urinates in their ears. I really do think Jesus was crucified and that he really was dead and buried. He, he thought that he was a son of God in the sense that he was specially chosen by God. I think Jesus really did think he was going to be the Messiah, the future king of Israel. I mean, that is, after all, why they crucified him. Hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you. Please invite your friends and let us have some good time together. Today, as you see, we know we have a topic and we are going to speak about Muhammad the time traveler. You know, uh, always a person who is a fraud. He claimed to be a prophet and he have no knowledge of anything which make it very easier or very easy for us to explore his fraud when we speak about time traveling we are not talking about uh, you know fiction story we are talking about a person who makes things up and we will start showing you series of muhammad the time traveler so you that judge by yourself. Uh, I want people here, you know, who they are in the chat, to focus with me in the topic. Otherwise, I will block you because I consider any question coming to me I have nothing to do with the topic. It's just to disturb our topic, and that's mean you are not smart, and you are not mature, and you don't belong here so if you have a question when we are done with the topic and i say anyone have a question done with the topic then you can give me a question have nothing to do with the topic so for now maintain your mouth and your brain and focus with us otherwise if you are bored just go leave if we go to the book of imam murra which is created by imam murra peace be upon him and muhammad aka allah we will find in chapter 20 the verse speaking about Moses and the people of uh, the Samartian. According to the stupid Muhammad, the certified idiot, the Samartian people, they were exist in the time of Moses. And Moses, he spoke to them. And those people, they deceived, deceived the Jews and they made them worship a cow. Now, you do not need to be a Jew or a Christian or a Hindu or a Buddha or an atheist, anything. You know, this is history. This is history. This is plain history. I have nothing to do with anyone, you know, uh, regardless of your religion. Doesn't matter what is your religion. Uh, doesn't matter how stupid you are or how smart you are, because Google can help you if you are so stupid or if you are so ignorant, which is very normal these days. If we ask the Muhammadan, how in the world Moses, he was exist in the time of the Samaritan? What the Muslim will say, you see, I'm going to switch translation one by one. This is the Muslim translation at ours, you know. If we ask the Muhammadan, how in the world this is happening? It's like saying that Trump, he spoke to Moses. 
how Trump he met Moses. Where Trump he met Moses. You know, by the way, everything is possible with Trump with his stories. Like he is the hero who can do everything. Yeah, you know, me. Yeah, uh, almost he was, what is missing to say worship me. Uh, but tr Trump is not a prophet. Trump he can lie. Biden he can lie. Everybody can lie. But this guy is a god. The one is talking here is God. So he is a god, but he is a stupid. He is a god. He do not know a very simple thing in history. And then if you read the articles of Muslims trying to refute this, you will see all kind of funny answers. <laughs> Do we have any Muslim in the chat? He is willing to show, join us and tell us how in the world Muhammad, he got this information perfectly matched with history. So this guy, Muhammad, Aqal Qatham, Aka Abu Imam Murrah, Aka Idiot, Aka Jambu Mambo, Rambo, you know, will never fight anyone. You know, he hide always behind his wife legs. He missed, he mixed everything up. And just to show you how stupid this man is, according to Muhammad, Musa is the uncle of Isa, and Isa is the son of Maryam, and Maryam is the sister of Aaron. If we go to different verse in the Quran, And now the Muslim, they answer, they say, oh, uh, this is at the time, at that time, they used to call the person by his uh, great, uh, from his nation, you know? So they say, oh, sister of Aaron. Well, what do you mean, oh, sister of Aaron? First of all, Mary, she is not from the tribe of Aaron. Secondly, who is the greater in Islam, Aaron or Moses? Who is Who's a greater? If you wanna, if you are saying we call them by their great uh, prophet or etc., who is a greater, <laughs> Moses or Aaron in Islam? Any Muslim can answer me. Who is the one uh, uh, Allah He spoke to him supposedly? So Mary, she is the sister of Aaron, and the Muslim they try to fix that, but that will not work for long. Why? Because the stupid Muhammad, he made another mistake. We will find that there is a whole chapter in the Quran, the yellow pages of Imam Murrah, saying that there is uh, Musa's, Musa's and Mary, both of them, they have the same father. If you go here, you will see it says Al Imran. Al, this is not an Arabic word actually, it's an Aramaic, which means uh, the family, the family of Imran. So all of those who will appear here are from the family of Amran. Everybody you see there in this chapter is from the family of Amran. Who is the family of Amran? Amran is the same father of Moses. He is the same father of Mary. Remember in Arabic, the Quran used the word Maryam. Maryam is exactly the correct name of Maryam, the sister of Aaron. True. Aaron. He have a sister. Her name is Maryam. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, this guy, he sat with the Jews. He heard from them that Aaron, he have a sister. Her name is Maryam. Okay, uh, Maryam, she is the mother of uh, Isa. Who, by, by the way, we will go back to Isa just to laugh. Isa, even the name, even every name this guy here, he got wrong because his name is the father of Musa's. His name is not Imran, it is Umram or Umram when you speak in the Hebrew language. So Umram is not Imran. So even the name he got wrong. And if the Mohammedan, they want to try to fix that, any Muslim can explain to us how the father of Mary become his name is Imran, and this is the same father of Moses. What happened to the real name of the father of Miriam? <laughs> so Moses was exist in the time of the Samaritan. Moses is the uncle of Jesus. 
Mary is the sister of Aaron, which means she is the sister of Moses too. And uh, Miriam, she have a son, his name is Asa. Now we go to Asa. I don't know if there is any Muhammadan can help us. How come we cannot find this name in any historian book about a person whose name is Asa? He was the son of Maryam, and he is uh, uh, Jesus. Any Muhammadan can help us? Where this name is coming from? When the first time it appeared? Any Muhammadan? Mayday. Mayday. You see, when the Muslim they use the word Jesus in the Quran, there's no Jesus in the Quran. There is Isa, as you see, in Arabic. And always Isa is mentioned as Isa is the son of Maryam. Why not a single Christian? And I am an Arab Christian. We never heard of somebody, his name is Isa, and he is supposed to be Jesus. Why our grand, 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 grandfather, through history, as you know, like, you know, religion, go through families, uh, through, you know, generation to generation, to so, etc. This is what the Muslims even believe. They believe that the Quran is, a, as a, you know, a transmit through, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, believers through history from one to one. So why we cannot find one person coming with this name? The reason is very simple. Muhammad the fool, he follows some Jewish tradition that Maryam, the sister of Aaron, she had a son, his name is Esau. which is not approved by the Bible, because according to the Bible, Miriam, she did not get married. But the dump, Muhammad, the dump, Muhammad, the dump, the dump, he always dump his dump as big as poo, poo it can be. But his dump cannot be used as a fertilizer. So he come to the conclusion that Isa is the same person. He is a son of Miriam. Miriam is the sister of Aaron. And Moses was existing in the time of the Pharisees. And Maryam, her father, his name is Omron. As you see here, uh, you will see the, uh, 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 the father of uh, uh, Maryam, supposedly, who his name is Omron. And if we ask the Muslims, where Muhammad he got this from? Where, what, is, what is the proof that there is a man, his name is Omron? He gave his wife, she gave birth to a lady or a girl. Her name is Maryam. Where, where, are you, where are you get this from? You see, if you want to say that the Christian, they changed the name, we changed the name 600 years before Muhammad to prove that Muhammad is a fraud. Does that make sense? <laughs> so, Imran is an old man. His wife, she is an old woman too. And Allah decided to give him a female, a special female. Her name is Maryam. If you go a verse before, or two verse before, you will see that Allah chose Adam and Noah and the family of Abraham above all mankind, above even the genie. Here you will see another problem for the stupid Muhammad. All of us, we heard that Muslims, they claim that Muhammad is descended from Ishmael. And the Quran claim that Abraham he is the one who rebuilt the Kaaba, not built the Kaaba, because according to Muslims, uh, you know, they have tons of stories about who built the Kaaba first time. One of them, it was the angels, and then uh, Adam, who Allah, he sent him down to India, and this is a different story. We will laugh about it later. In case you do not know, Adam, what is missing is to say that Adam used to speak Urdu. 
you know, this is what Muhammad did not say it. So Adam, he landed in Sri Lanka, you know. Actually, I can maybe find you a video, let me see. Let us see here. I'm typing in Arabic. I hate it when I do that, you know? <laughs> like you type, etc., and then you find yourself typing in Arabic. Uh... <clears throat> Let us see this one. From among Adam alayhi salam, he came down onto the earth. He was sent to the earth. There's a question. Where did he land? He was, he wasn't just thrown so that suddenly he landed, meaning he dropped, but Allah placed him on the earth. This we find in the narration of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa where he says that Adam alayhi salam nazala fil hind. <laughs> he came down in what is known as the indo pak subcontinent, precisely Sri Lanka. <laughs> so, uh, guys, a prophet Adam, he landed with the parachute from the heaven. Remember, the heaven of Islam for Adam is in the sky, not like the biblical one. The biblical one, Adam was given a garden in the, in the earth here, not, not in different place. So Allah, he, when he got upset from Adam and his wife, because his wife, she told him to eat the apple, and Adam, he usually he liked banana. So... Uh, uh, Allah, he decided to send him down, and where? He's then down in Sri Lanka. And then the traveler, the time traveler Muhammad, uh, maybe, according to science, Sri Lanka wasn't, wasn't exist, by the way, at that time. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> by the way, don't you Muslims, you say you, you believe in the Big Bang? So you cannot deny those things now. As long as you believe that the earth is billions of years, etc., and Big Bang is fit with your Quran, then you cannot deny what the, those atheists, they say. So look what happened with this donkey, Muhammad. Adam was sent down to Sri Lanka. I'm going to open Sri Lanka map for you. Again, we are typing in Arabic. I hate it. Okay. According to the stupid Muhammad, Adam... He was the first one who did Hajj to the Kaaba. But this is Sri Lanka, and Sri Lanka is nothing but an island. It is an island. So how in the world this man, Adam, he was able, you see here there's sea, here there, it's not connected. This is not a land connected to India. This is a huge distance. So Adam, he was landed in Sri Lanka. Okay, great. Adam now is going to go to Mecca. I'm not going to ask you how we will find the direction. I'm not going to ask you. How many years it took him? According to Muslim, Adam, he did 40 times Hajj to Mecca. 40 times. He go backward, forward to Sri Lanka. I mean, have you, heard this? Oh, have you ever heard of a stupid story like this? As long as you have to go to Mecca to do Hajj, why you are you going back to Sri Lanka? Did you lay eggs there? So, as you see, Sri Lanka is an island. And you cannot cross to the other part of the land, which you have to in order to go all the way to Mecca. And not only that, after you cross the land, as you see here, let us zoom out. This is India. You have to go through all of India. And now what is Pakistan? And then you go to 
uh, Iran, and then you go to Iraq, and then you go to Syria, and oh, you can go from Iraq actually, and you can go back right away to Saudi Arabia. But that is very long journey. And not only that, Allah, he landed, as you heard this guy, he landed uh, uh, Adam in Sri Lanka, and Eve was landed in Jeddah. This is where Jeddah is, and this is where Sri Lanka is. Have you ever heard of a stupid story like this before? The time of Traveler Muhammad. According to Science 2, at that time, Saudi Arabia was not exist. It was under the ground. It was an ocean, actually, I mean, under the water. And that's why they have supposedly, according to science, a lot of fossil fuel. For all dead animals from the ocean, by time they become fuel. And this is why Saudi Arabia supposedly is a pure desert. Why? Because this is the sand of the ocean, deep ocean. So at that time, Saudi Arabia does not exist. Sri Lanka does not exist. But yet, according to Muhammad, the time traveler, Allah, he sent down Muhammad to Sri Lanka. Sorry, sent Adam to Sri Lanka. And he sent uh, Eve to Jeddah. Now, the question here, by the way, I mean, how in the world and why Allah, he sent Eve to Jeddah and he sent Adam to Sri Lanka. Isn't it him who told them go and you like you you know you live together down in the earth? What happened? There was an error in the GPS. And as long as Allah he sent Adam to Sri Lanka and Eve to Jeddah, uh, how they met again? He sent her uh, an Instagram message. Adam he was able to find out where she from TikTok. Was Eve making videos in YouTube and she mentioned where she is now? There's ocean between them. There's countries between them. And the funny, the Quran says that if somebody come to you with something, tell him, bring your proofs. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the Quran says. It's not me. Bring your proof. All of those words saying all those verses, sentence, uh, you know, it says. Bring your proofs, bring your proofs, bring your proofs, bring your proofs. It's all over. Well, as long as you asking them to bring their proof, what is your proof? Huh? Anyone? The proof of Allah is the Quran, but as you see, the Quran is a stupid city book. I'm going to stop here, and I will give a chance to the Muhammadan to answer me and refute me as usual. You know, the Muhammadan, they can refute anyone. It's really easy, shish kebab. You know, Mohammedan, they follow the method of Joe Biden. You know the thing. In two words, they can refute you. You know the thing, and the thing is known. And that's it. We answered you. We want to see even if Imam Murra agree with this. I think even Imam Murra will not dare to agree with the stupidity of Muhammad. So my Skype, I'm, I'm opening my Skype right now. Is going to be there in a few seconds. Please, if you're a Mohammedan, text me and tell me how in the world your prophet is so ignorant and how come your God is stupid. And how come, and by the way, we did not mention the rest. There is tons of historic mistakes.
you are just mentioning like you know just a snack any muhammadan my skype is open any muhammadan if you are a muhammadan and you are proud to be a muhammadan please feel free to contact me in skype i will call you immediately in best scenario, if I could not speak to you, I will ask the Samaritan who was existing the time of Musa to speak to you. And that explains why we like Indian movies. Because our grand-grandfather, Mr. Adam, he was from India. All of us, we like spicy food. Don't we? Can you explain to me why? It's clear. Because Adam, he was landed in India, specifically Sri Lanka. Actually, I'm thinking to move to Sri Lanka so I can live next to my grand-grand-grandfather, Mr. Adam. But now I'm confused. Adam from Sri Lanka, Eve is from, from Jeddah. For how many years Adam did not have sex? and how he was making babies. Do you think they were having sex online? I mean, the guy, he did not see his wife for long. As you see, the trip is so, so far. I remember, you know, we are not talking about now, you know, you can fly from Sri Lanka to Saudi Arabia, you know, maybe 10 hours, I'm not sure, maybe 12, maybe 13. Uh, but at that time, it's going to take him maybe a six month journey, especially this guy is just walking in his feet. Uh, we have a Muslim saying to me, you are a, you are a liar worshiping a man, let us call him. You are a liar worshipping a man. Aman Rabbi Aman. I'm trying to call him, but look like he's, uh, he is using a stolen internet, so it's not connecting. Let's see if we can call him again. Let's mute the ring. Hello? Mute YouTube, please. Mute YouTube. Hello. Hello. Uh, here we go. You stupid idiot. Okay, ultimate fart. So okay, so so listen, 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 potato. So listen. So did Adam land? Did Adam land in Sri Lanka or not? Uh, what matters is, uh, are you gonna say that that uh, Sri? I just got angry. What matter? So you are calling me to say to me what matter? Go and put a cork in your anus. You don't have a mouth. You have an anus. So if it doesn't matter why you are calling me, ultimate fort, does it matter? Yeah, it matter. For us, it matter. It doesn't matter for you because you are a certified donkey. And by the way, your wall is exactly the same as the wall of Muhammad. By mistake, the guy in the other day, he opened the camera for me. And you guys, you should see the wall behind him. I mean, a guy who lived, a donkey, he have a better room. I'm not talking about a poor person. This guy, he have a fancy car, supposedly. The most dirty wall ever remind me of Muhammad when he was drying his hands on the wall. Now, we want a Muhammadan. He is mature, adult. His religion matter for him. This guy, he believed that the Arab are stupid and donkeys and coward and corrupt. But his prophet is an Arab. Huh? We have to agree then. Do we have any brave Muhammadan? It matter for him, the stupidity of his prophet. Anyone?
Kenny Abdul. Do we have any Abdul? Mayday, Mayday, Mayday. Do we have any Abdul? Anyone? We can take two Abdul at a time, including Imam Murwa. If you are Imam Murwa and you have knowledge, or if you are Ibn Hanbal, the son of Dambal, or if you are a lady who practice breastfeed for adult, following the Prophet, I mean, everything about this guy is, 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 is normal. Everything about him is normal. His stories is amazing. And you know, Adam, by the way, in case you do not know, you see, we talk about history, right? And Muslims, they speak about science. Adam was very, very tall, brother. How tall? The time traveler Muhammad, did they put Adam in a microwave and they shrink him later? According to Muhammad, Adam was 60 span long, or tall, sorry. 60 span. Do we have any history supporting this? that a human being used to be 60 span tall. By the way, I'm so upset that my grandfather Adam is so short because I am 61 span. You know, last time I took airplane, they have to take all the chairs off because they could not, I could not fit. You know, even my feet come out from the cabinet of the captain. Don't say it's a lie, Sahih al-Bukhari, Imam Murra. Support this evident. The second we ask the Muslims about the proof, they say the Prophet said, would the Prophet stupid man, don't you see this guy is mentally ill? The Prophet said. Okay, who said that to the Prophet? Allah said to the Prophet, but okay, did you see Allah speaking to Muhammad? No. And actually, did even, did even Muhammad spoke to Allah? The Quran says no. You see, the Muslims, they have names for Prophets. As an example, Moses, his name is Kalimullah. Kalimullah. What Kalimullah mean? The one who spoke to Allah. Muhammad is not Kalimullah because he never spoke to Allah. <laughs> so, this guy Muhammad, he never spoke to his God. His God, he sent him Quran when he is doing poo-poo. And this is historically, by the way, proven to be uh, right. I mean, come on, you are a prophet of God, and now you are going to receive the chapter of Al-Fatiha, which is the most important chapter for the Muslim to pray five times a day. And when Allah decides to give it to him, when Muhammad, he take off his panty and he decide to do poo-poo. And then each time the angel, he come to him, and he said to him, Oh, Muhammad, Muhammad, he run away. Have you ever heard of a prophet doing poo-poo, receive Quran, he run away? And what, we, what make it more funny, this is written by them. This is not our story. This is not a fabrication of the Jews and the Christian and the Hindus. This is, their, their, this is the official government website of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. This is the book of Tafsir, uh, Asbab al-Nuzul. This is the chapter one, verse number one. Why you are not afraid of God? You know, Ajay, uh, I will tell you why I'm not afraid of God, but not, not my God, your God. First of all, my God, you know, I don't, I, I'm not afraid of him because I know he is just and justice. But let me say to you why I'm not afraid of God, which is your God. Your God, he threat the Christians if they don't believe in Muhammad, he will erase our faces. He will make our nose in the back and our eyes in the back, and our ears upside down. And nothing happened. A God who promise, and he don't do what he promise, obviously he is a fraud. This is your stupid God in chapter 4, verse number 47. It says to the Christians and the Jews, 
believe in what we have revealed to Muhammad, confirming what is already what what with you, not actually this is what but we uh, what uh, with you, not what came before. Before we efface your faces, do you see the threat of Allah? And He made a threat that this will happen immediately, because He said the same as we did to those who break the Sabbath. And how now we go to another history, messed up history. According to Muhammad, you see Muhammad is a Darwinism person, but he is in the other direction. So Darwin, who stole his information from different books, I don't know if you know if you if you heard the news that Darwin is not the one behind the Darwin theory. It turned to be that he stole it from different guy. <laughs> what a fraud like Muhammad. So Darwin, he says that we used to be an ape and we became a human. Muhammad, he, he says, we used to be human, we became ape. And by the way, this is historically proven to be true. I have a friend, his name is Jack Shalom. He went to do fishing on Saturday. He come. I look at him, I could not recognize him. But he speak to me, he's, you know, he said, Shalom, Christian, you know? I said, what the heck, who's a monkey speaking? A monkey and he's talking? He said, Habibi. Habibi, I'm Jack Sharon, Habibi. You did not notice me, Habibi? What the heck? I said, Jack Shalom, what happened to you? He said, Habibi, I want to do fishing in Saturday, Habibi. And Allah, he made me a monkey. Historically proven to be true. Scientifically proven to be true. And Muhammad is not a time traveler. Here we go. He knew what Darwin will say, but in the opposite direction. And not only that, if you ask the Muhammadan, why the Jews, why, why the Jews, they, uh, you know, why Allah, he made the monkeys? Brother, because they did fishing in Saturday. Oh, look how dangerous the crime is. So if you do fishing in Saturday, Allah will make you a monkey. But if you rape a woman, or you are a child molester, sex molester, sex offender, uh, sex rapist for children like Muhammad, Allah will not make you a monkey? Or maybe Allah did not make Muhammad a monkey because already he is. Hmm? Any Muhammadan? And I asked him, and, and, and you know the funny, the, the, the Quran of the Quran, the funny of the Quran, is when he say, and asked him about the matter of people of the Sabbath. This is a very known story. They watch, witness it, everybody witness it. Ask them, ask them about what happened to them. Ask them, okay, who saw this story? <laughs> and not only that, the story says that Allah, he made, he made their whale, not their fish. Come to them only in Saturday. Allah, He forbid the fish from coming to the beach or to the to the uh, to the their location. Supposedly they are an island in the village, and Allah He made the fish only come in Saturday. So He made them starve from hunger, and now they have to fish in Saturday because they need to eat. They have a family to feed, and when they did fish in Saturday, Allah He cursed them and He made them pigs and monkeys. But look what happened. In different verse in the Quran, the stupid Muhammad saying, if you are starving, it's okay, you can eat even pork. Do you see the stupidity of this man? How come if the Jews are starving, Allah will make them monkeys, but Muslims, they are forbidden from eating pork. And by the way, it's not true, because the Muslims have been ordered to eat from the cooking of the Christians. He says, today I made lawful for you all the food of the Christian and the Jews. So if they eat whatever they eat, you eat. And this is another proof that Muslims, they are fabricators when they say, we eat only halal food, because halal food is the food of the Christians. But here you see in chapter 5, verse number 3, that Allah who forbid for them eating pork, he allowed them to eat pork if they are hungry. Hmm. My friend, you say, had I know that you are live, we posted that we will be here since two days ago, and you can call the Sheikh right now so he can join us. That's not an excuse. Call him. Tell him, you know, let he join us. So what we notice here that Muhammad is not only a time traveler, 
Moses is the uncle of Jesus, and Aaron is the uncle of Jesus, and Maryam is the sister of Aaron. And Maryam, her father is Amran, and he is the same father of Moses, which is, you know, what, what, what the hell of this history? And then Pharisees, you know, sorry, the, the, the Samaris, or the Samaritan, they met with Moses, and they all exist in the time of Moses. And not only that, if we continue, it's endless. As an example, Haman was a minister of the Pharaoh. And the Pharaoh is the one who built the Babylon Tower. <laughs> Who is the one who built the Babylon Tower? Haman. But Haman was, this is a guy from Iraq. How Haman, the minister of a king in Iraq, he become the minister of the Pharaoh. Hmm? When Adam was created, there was not Sri Lanka. You cannot even think. You have no knowledge, CP. Look at the stupid Abu Muhammad is saying to me. <laughs> Let us call this Abdul. Maybe this is Ultimate Fart, because Ultimate Fart is the only one who speaks like this. Just for fun. Hello? Uh, see, you're filthy mouth like your prophet, son of Muta. I get lost. He right away say the F words. Son of Muta, like his mother. She gave birth to him in the bar. Anyway, nobody heard you, by the way, saying the F word. I know it's you. I know you are filthy. I know you are a certified idiot. Uh, so the Pharaoh, he said, Oh, Haman. Build a tower for me. Because I want to see the God of Moses. <laughs> True story. And then, then we find in different verse in the Quran, the stupid Muhammad, he forgot himself. We find that the tower of the Babylon was built by Allah. How we find out that? If you go and read the story of Harut and Marut, which is Harry Potter's story, you will see that Allah, he sent two angels using the tower of the Babylon to send down two angels. And those two angels, their job is to open a Harry Potter school, specifically to teach magic. So Haman become the minister of the Pharaoh. And by the way, even Muhammad, the stupid Muhammad, he think that Pharaoh is the name of the person. He don't think it's a title. If you see, there's a video made by this guy, I forgot his name, what's his name? From England? The Pakistani guy? The coward who don't dare even to say hello to me? I made a video about it, you know, before, I don't know, you, I'm, I'm sure you have it, guys. When he speak about how, how the Quran knew that uh, Ramses II is the Pharaoh, but what the heck? Quran knew that, the Quran keeps saying it clearly that Pharaoh is the name of the person. This is why if we go and type in the Quran, we will find, if we type the word Al, Al, we mentioned it actually already, you know, 15 minutes ago. Al is a word mean family. So if we type the word Al in the Quran, we will find it all over. So you will find Ali Pharaoh, the family of the Pharaoh. Ali Musas, the families of Musas. Ali Ibrahim, the family of Ibrahim. Ali Lut, Ali Yaqub, etc. Ali Yaqub, you see Al? Ali Pharaoh. So the stupid Muhammad, he thinks Pharaoh is a name of a person, and this is who he is. However, as long as we are talking about history, trying time traveling, 
And the Muslim, they claim that this is the Ramses II, and how the Quran knew that. You will find that Muhammad, he gave a name for the wife of the Pharaoh. What is the name of the Pharaoh, wife? Any Muslim can tell us? Any Muslim can help us. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> you know, Muhammad is a person who cannot keep his mouth shut. And the more, and the more he talk, the more he make poo-poo. This guy is certified poo-poo maker. But his poo-poo is not good for fertilization. It's good for comedy. As you see, we are laughing. So according to Muhammad, Allah will marry him not marry him, he will make him have sex with her, with the wife of Pharaoh, and the wife of Pharaoh, her name is Asiya bin Muzahim. She's an Arab brother. Her name is Asiya. <laughs> and the Mohammedan, they claim that this is... Let us show you some hadith, hold on. They say that Muhammad, he knew that this is Ramses II. How the Quran knew that? Huh? Oh, where is the hadith? Let's see. I think this website doesn't take. Okay, let's see. Hmm. I'm just trying to show you, to find you some uh, hadith. Hmm. Yeah, this one will do. Let us see this one. <clears throat> oh. Okay. He left as a donkey, he never came back as a horse. That is the story of Muhammad. This is Sahih Bukhari, which is very authentic, and Muslims cannot lie about it. You see here it says the wife of Pharaoh. The wife of Pharaoh. Pharaoh is a name. Like you say, the wife of Moses. The wife of Abraham. The wife of Pharaoh, not the wife of the Pharaoh. And I'm not going by the English, by the way. I'm going by the Arabic. So the women of Pharaoh, her name is Asiya. And as long as the Muslims, they have article, and they are confirming that the Pharaoh at that time, his name is name Ramses II. If we search in two seconds, <laughs> In Prophet Google, what was the name of Ramses II? What the name of the wife of Ramses II? You will see that the wife name have nothing to do with what Muhammad said. Her name is Nefertari, and she is a daughter of a king too, not as Muhammad he claimed. And the funny, this is an Islam Muslim website run by Egypt, and the one is making the article there is a Muslim. So Queen Nefertari is the wife of Ramses the second. The Muslim they come with big fabrication saying, Well, how the Quran knew that this guy is the same Pharaoh in the time of Moses, he was Ramses the second. So, Muslims, as you see, your prophet is a fool, and his history is messed up. And what makes it more stupid, that the wife of the Pharaoh, her name is an Arabic name. And she is the daughter of Muzahim. How is Muzahim doing, by the way? Is he the same guy, Imam Murrah? <laughs> she is 
She is the daughter of Muzahim. Her name is Asiya, and she is the daughter of Muzahim, brother. Mm. <laughs> I'm really convinced. <laughs> Do we have any Muhammadan there besides this stupid, filthy mouth, ultimate fart, who said the F word to his prophet always? Dare to call us and tell us why your prophet is so stupid? Anyone? Any Abdul? So now did you learn if somebody says to you how the Quran in you that the Pharaoh in the time of Moses is Ramses the second, you know, you learn how to answer the stupidity of this religion? Obviously Muhammad he is messed up. And all the story is is a joke. My friend, there is no need for tomorrow, today, anytime. You know, I post when I'm going to go live, I put the time. You can call him and he can join us. There's no need for any time tomorrow or day after. There's no need. Surprise me, my friend. Let him surprise me. Ambush me, ambush me. You know, I like to be ambushed. As you see, my Skype is open. I don't care who is calling me. As long as he do not have faith in mouth. Even if he's a stupid, like, you know, this guy, Ultimate Fart, I took him uh, like a hundred times before. But we had enough with this idiot. You know, he, he know, he know nothing. Uh, he don't know Arabic. Yet, he don't. He claimed that he do not know need to know Arabic to know the Quran, and in the same time he don't accept translations. And when we show him translation, he claimed that he accepted. He refused it. <laughs> it's mental. So, are you with or against? Depend in the weather. Depend in Imam Murra. Hmm? Yeah, do ambush me. You know that they do the same like you did to. Uh, uh, to his name, Apostate Prophet, you know, like, uh, don't tell me that Mimi Hijab is coming and surprise me. <laughs> I will make you all make poop on your pants. <laughs> anyway, uh, do we have any Muhammadan? He really want to say anything about what we said until now? So why history says the wife of the Pharaoh in the time of Moses, why Nefertari, why Nefertari and Muhammad, he gave her different name, and he gave her different father name. I mean, everything is messed up. Mary, she have different father name. Mary, she have different brother. Mary, suddenly, she is the sister of Aaron. She is the, the mother of, of Isa. And who is Isa? And Adam, he landed in Sri Lanka. And that explained why I like spicy Indian food. You know why Indian, I don't know if you are an Indian, why Indian don't make a movie about Adam landing in Sri Lanka? And you know, like what is nice about Indian movies, you do not need to explain anything. Like Adam in Sri Lanka, he is the first man and suddenly 10,000 people will be appear behind him dancing. Don't ask why, don't ask who, don't ask for how in the world they appear if Adam is the first one. It's an Indian movie. That is Muhammad movie. Every word, every story of Muhammad is an Indian movie. The guy, he is going to meet his girlfriend in the middle of the desert. Nobody there. The sun is coming down. Suddenly, there's 20,000 people coming, shaking their head and their ass. How? Don't ask. It's an Indian movie. And this is Muhammad movie. Ask no question. Even the Quran in chapter 5, verse 101 says, ask no questions. Verse 102 says, why? Because former generation asked the same question and they lost their faith. Now, can we have 10,000 Muslims want to call me? Like an Indian movie? Anyone? Do you know how many people live in Islam watching my videos of Muhammadan? I receive every day emails you can't believe. Why? 
because you, Muhammadan, are not doing your part to defend. Show us the truth. Do you know how many Muslim kids are becoming opposed, apostate? Oppo, oppo, apostate? Huh? Do you know? When they see the stupidity of your prophet and none of you can defend it? 100,000 Muslims leave Islam every single year. Our youth are full of doubt. And there is Muslim youth leaving Islam. 24% of Muslim youth are leaving Islam. Brother, it's 24%. Brother, I have a question for you, brother. It looks like you are a person who is in control of the world numbers and calculation. How do you know that it is a 24% of Muslim youth leaving Islam, brother? Do the Muslim report for you, brother? Brother? Where Muhammad and get their numbers from, brother? Who cares who is going to calculate? Who is going to check the facts? Who is going to ask nobody? This is, those are Muhammadan. Say whatever you want, as long as you are a sheikh, everybody will say, hey, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. And by the way, they will say, alhamdulillah, even when you say to them, everybody left Islam. Because are, nobody is listening. Once I went to a Muslim chat room in Paltok, and you know those Muhammadan, they are crazy, you know, you just say anything, good news for them. So I wasn't using the Christian Prince name, I was using a different name. Like, because I cannot even enter with that name, I'm blocked. Or they will bounce me in the best scenario. So, I type in the chat, today, uh, the wife of the Pope and his mother, the third wife of the Pope and his mother, who died three years ago, something like that, she converted to Islam today. The Muslim who is holding the microphone, the sheikh, he said, stop, 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 stop. Everybody stop the text, stop the text. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Look, 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 look. Amazing, Allahu Akbar. The third wife of the Pope and his mother who died last year, she converted to Islam today. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. And the holy chat room went crazy. Praising Allah for victory. That the third wife of the Pope and his mother-in-law who died last three years or three years, a year ago, she converted to Islam today. It took them like five minutes, six minutes. Everybody is going so happy. And then one of the admins, he took the microphone and said, you guys stupid, what's wrong with you? This guy is making fun of you. The Pope don't have a wife. And how he's saying that his mother, she died last year and she converted to Islam today. Just say anything. Say anything, praising Islam, they will take it. They will spread it. I'm sure like uh, everybody start texting now. Do you know that the wife of the Pope and his third wife, and his mother-in-law who died last year, she converted to Islam today. Takbir, brother. No brain. I mean, if we are talking about people who believe that when they pray to Allah, Allah will increase the size of their penis to make it endless. And you are talking about brain. Hmm? Your son is going to become a child is about to become apostate. Your child is about to become apostate. Your child is about to become apostate. Okay, and what you can do about it? Call me. You coward. Did you say that, CP? Did you say to the Muslim women, suckle me? Yes, I was quoting your faith, prophet. He hang up on me like I was an off mother. What do you mean how a dead man, women can convert to Islam? Everything is possible in Islam. Except Allah can have a son. <laughs> so do we have any Muhammadan would, not, would like to say anything to us? My Skype is open. If there's any Muhammadan, he have long beard, short beard, no beard. I know that you might be trying to grow beard like some, or, or, or Zachar Naik. You know, and all the fertilization in the work is not working in his beard. And he's trying to look like an Arab, you know. You know, look like a sheikh is not working. The beard is not growing.
Do we have any Muhammad? And explain to us. We mentioned just few stupid things in your books. It's just a few. We did not even quote one percent. Not even one two thousand percent. And you know, for me, I like, I like Harry Potter story. But I never thought that the first one who opened st school to teach magic it was Allah. Look how nice Allah is. Allah he decided to send two angels. His name, their name is Harut and Marut. Musical you know, name. Harut, Harut and Marut. Sent by Allah to the earth. To open a school to teach magic. But notice with me. Harut and Marut, who they are two angels sent by Allah to teach magic. They teach a specific kind of magic. What is that? They teach you magic so you can make a man fight with his wife. That's deep. I mean, do you see Allah, how he is a family supporter? He loves families. He decided to make everyone like, do you have a, do you have a wife? Do you have a, do you have a fight with your wife lately? Do you have a fight with your husband lately? Let me tell you the bad news. It was Harut and Marut making magic against you and your husband. If you are not happy with your husband, somebody put magic on you. Learn it from Harut and Marut. Harut said to Marut, let us obey Allah and open a school to teach people how to make people divorce. I mean, look at the charity organization which Allah he opened in this earth. The first school he opened is not to teach you how to become a good citizen or a good husband or a good wife. No, the first school he opened is to teach you how to make a man and wife kill each other. And now we understand why women, they have long nails. You might think about it, you might not, but it's a fact. Can you deny that? Can you deny that women, they have long nails? See, the Christians, the Kuffar cannot deny that. It's a fact. People, they fight because of Harut and Marut. For how long those Christians they try to extinguish the light of Allah. Do you think really you can extinguish the light of Allah? My friend, first we need to find the light so we can extinguish it. What light? Your prophet himself is illiterate, ignorant. He do not even know how to write his name or to, 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 to read his name. And suddenly he became a scholar in history. In Unbelievable. Look, one of the tricks of Harut and Marut, they make women under the influence of magic grow their nails. And they write words in them, like to fool you. And also like, love you, love you, get closer, get closer. You get closer, you get closer, she put your her hand around your neck and you are gone. And then she collect the insurance. And you are telling me that Harut and Marut are not true? It is a certified fact. Who can deny those things? Only illiterate. Even Imam Murrah, he approved it. <clears throat> uh, the only one is trying when I call us is Imam Murrah. What we can do? <laughs> no, we have, you know, we have to, we have to admit, my friend. I mean, people they can deny things. 
Uh, but it's a it's a fact. Women they grow their nails because they are under the influence of Harut and Marut, and women become victims of this magic. And those Christians they deny that when it's happening every day. How many men get injured every day, every day because those women being aggressive against us? Huh? How you can deny that? You cannot. <clears throat> Yes, my friend, you are a Muslim? Yes, I must be good to a Christian prince. Yes, I am a Christian prince. How, how we know that you are a Muslim? Can you confirm to us that you are a Muslim? La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. That's wonderful, my friend. So what do you think about what we are saying about all those history mistakes and errors in the Quran? Uh, well, to be honest, I, I don't necessarily like to... Um, because you said, as an example, the wife of Pharaoh um, was Asia, and and this is true. It is mentioned in our narration okay. that this is the case. So I'm not going to lie about that. But the brother, uh, I I don't know who you're referring to, who said that um, Pharaoh has been discovered to be Ramsey the um, second. I, I I don't uh, agree with this notion. Well, you can see the videos. Uh, people they can rem remind all all of them. Mimi Hijab. He said that. Uh, all of them, all those YouTubers. Who, who, who's him. Mimi Hijab? Sorry, who Mimi Hijab. He is the guy who uh, you, you know him. The guy who take off his clothes in front of the Chinese embassy. You don't know him? No. Okay. Well, he's he, he like to strip to prostate. But anyway, so as long you are a Muslim, uh, you don't want to make any comment about those errors in the Quran. Uh, well, I only heard you talk about uh, this part uh, at the moment. Uh, I, I wanted to actually ask you something because um, mm. I've seen a few of your videos. Um, can, you know, can you keep yeah. uh, your mouth closed from the microphone because for some reason I'm losing your voice? Uh, give me one second, sorry. Right. Is it better now? Yeah, it's better. Go ahead. Okay. Um, could you give me, uh, let's say, either Quran, maybe let's say let's stick with the Quran and maybe you can use some authentic hadith right. on why you think the prophet was either you know a false prophet or a liar okay let us first discuss what the word prophet mean what prophet mm -hmm. mean I, I guess the better word to use is uh, messenger of God but uh, prophet means someone who prophesies uh, all right something so is he a prophet people. or a messenger is he's a messenger of God? He's not a prophet. You see, then you're going to ask me what what prophecies has he made? No, no, no. Um, you see, come true. so you are you are denying now he's a prophet because you're afraid. I'm going to ask you what prophecies he made. So no, he he's a prophet. Okay, is he a prophet or not? He is. Yes. Okay, tell me the prophecy he made. Okay. Um, you mean that's come to pass or are going to come to pass? My friend, like, prophecy is a prophecy. When you try to prove to me, you know, first of all, by the way, I welcome you. You sound like a nice guy. So you are welcome. Always we welcome Muslims who they are really polite to join us and we will treat you very nice, the same as you treat us. So you are welcome. My friend, help me. When you say a prophecy, that's mean he said something and it's confirmed. So obviously something came to pass. Okay, um, are you familiar with Surah al -Rum? Okay, let's go to Surah al -Rum. What about it? <clears throat> if if I'm correct with my understanding, and, and I could be corrected here. Yeah. Um, this verse was... No, sorry, I, I got a better example for you. Um, no, let's, the... go, let's that... go to verse 1 first. Let's finish it. Okay, if, if, I'm, if my understanding is correct, and there are some hadiths that uh, suggest this, I, I don't know them by memory, but um, <clears throat> it was revealed at the time of the Battle of the Trench, where the Muslims were surrounded by the Mushrikins. Hmm. And it was, there's a few hadiths as well along the lines, but hmm. while, the, while the Prophet, you know, was, you know, uh, ditching, you know, to make a trench, I'm, I'm sure you're familiar with uh, the Battle of the Trench. Hmm. He told them about the prophecy that, you know, at that period, the Persians already conquered parts of Rome up to Egypt. Um, but the prophecy sort of the prophet said that you know the Romans will be uh, victorious in this battle. 
Mm. And at that time, it was uh, very difficult to believe this just because of, um, and, and I am a historian here, mm. um, it, it was quite difficult to believe just because of, you know, uh, course of the second um, domination of the Roman Empire. Okay, let me answer about this. And you are yes. the one who said you would like to see an uh, accurate hadith, right? Acc uh, yes. According to your hadith, this verse came after the Rome became victorious, not before. And this is the hadith in front of your eyes. Go ahead and read it. Uh, I can see the Quran here. Uh, yeah, it's, it's going to take maybe a second for you to come there. Okay, sure. Let me just make sure YouTube is live. Okay. Is it coming now? <clears throat> uh, no, I still see the Quran. Oh, okay, yes, I can see the mm. hadith. Okay. Um, Prophet, I can just see half of it, sorry. Okay, I think it's delay. Just give it a few seconds. Okay, I will say narrated on the back. Okay, on the day of Badr, the Romans had a victory of the Persians, so the believers were pleased with that. Then the following were revealed, the Romans had been defeated. Up to his saying, the believers were rejoiced with the help of Allah, he said, so the believers were happy with the victory. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, so um, so the claim is gone, and as you see, this is Sahih Hadith. It's authentic. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Not only that, even if this Hadith doesn't exist, the numbers will beat your prophet. Why? Because the word "bada" in Arabic, and I'm sure I don't know. I think you speak Arabic. "Bada" I mean from three to nine, correct? Mm -hmm. If it's ten, I don't speak Arabic, but yes, that's okay. Right. If it's ten, then your prophet is false. If you go and read, you will see that the date you are you are the one who mentioned the date of the ball. So you will see that it took the Roman long after that to be victorious because vic victory is only accomplished when the war is over, right? Mm -hmm. So yep. as long as we are fighting, maybe you take a city from me today, tomorrow I might take it back. So it's not a victory yet. So this is temporarily victory. But you will notice that the Roman they were not victorious, and this is always you know you can go on Google and you will find it took it took that at least 14 to 15 to 16 years until the Roman they really were victorious over the Persian. Secondly, there's a mistake here in the verse you chose for me. If you look at me, you will see that the uh, uh, the Roman when they are victorious, who is the one will be uh, happy? The, the Muslims. Why? Uh, this is a good question. Um, I, I I don't know the 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 Islamic. Uh, I don't I don't know the position for it, but I would assume it's because, uh, as you know, with history. After the Prophet died, um, they were able to quickly conquer both Roman but no, and no, the you see, no, Empire. you see, the believers will be happy because the Roman are victorious, not because the Roman will be, you know, victorious, uh, uh, not because later the Muslim will be victorious over the Roman. No, no, but it weakened both empires. You see, no, 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 this is not about you know, the, because if you go and read the tafsir, you will see, because supposedly the Christians are believers and the Muslims are believers. So the Arab, they were making fun of Muhammad, saying to them, look like your God is not helping. So Muhammad, he made a response saying, well, he is going to help, right? So here you see the stupidity that secondly, uh, like suddenly... Can you, can so, you show me, can you show me this um, uh, understanding? Open it, here we go, we open chapter 30, verse number 4. Mm -hmm. Okay, give me a second. There, there's a delay as well, so please... No problem, me. don't worry about it, this is, I will... Let me open the tafsir. <clears throat> Chapter 13, verse number 4. And there's a book, it's called Asbab al Nuzul, too. You can, you know, you can read it. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Hmm. Uh, <clears throat> Let us see, this is Ajalalain. 
Okay, command before the first victory. Okay, and the result God command the word. Okay, let's see uh, the book of Esbab and Nuzul. Maybe will make it better, easier for us. Uh, there's no Esbab and Nuzul here. Let's see if we have pass. All right. Uh, okay, in a few years. Okay, in a few years, baby usually means between three and nine years or ten years. So two armies met again seven years after this former encounter. The Persians to God belongs the command before and after that is before a defeat of the. Uh, okay. Well, you know, actually, here we go. Uh, the one is complaining, the one is making fun of this is the disbelievers. When the Roman uh, will defeat the Persian and also when he gave victory, who is uh -huh. the one who gave victory? Allah. Okay. So, uh, let us see. I'm trying to find where, like, exactly the translation, you know, most of the time is not really uh, a decent translation. Let's see Ibn Kathir. Here we go. Let's go to Ibn Kathir. Maybe Ibn Kathir will make it better. <clears throat> Even though Ibn Kathir in Arabic have nothing to do with Ibn Kathir in English, but you know, I don't speak Arabic, so we have to use it. Um, so this is Ibn Kathir in Arabic. Uh, okay. So why you find that, but what you're trying to say is that the reason why the Muslims were happy it's because the Romans were Christians and they are yeah. fellow believers, yeah. right? Yeah, because the, pag the pagans supposedly making fun of the Christian, they lost the Persian, they destroyed them, you know, they killed them, they took uh -huh. Jerusalem, you know. Uh, yeah, okay, and true. Allah will help, you know, Allah will help, who he will, so Allah, he helped the Roman, okay, and for what reason, let us see. Uh, uh, on the day they were the revealed Persian were prevailing over the Roman, the Muslim wanted the Roman revealed over Sorry, the Muslims. So this? Read carefully. This is Mikathir. The Muslim okay. wanted the Roman to prevail over them because they were people of the book. So give it a second. I, I think it's still loading. Okay, there it is. The position of the matter before helps. On the day they were revealed, the Persian were prevailing over the Romans. The Muslim wanted the Romans to prevail over the Persians because they were both people. Follow their book. Concerning hmm. this, Allah said. And then he says, and the Quraysh, on order, on the other hand, wanted the Persian to prevail uh -huh. because neither of them were people who follow the book, correct? Yeah, that's okay. right. There's a reaction. Okay, let us, let us hear, see how, how silly is that. As long we are people of the book and Allah will give us victory because we are people of the book. How we are the same people who we attack a few years after, but we are the same people who worship Jesus. How the Muslim will be happy to see the people of the book victorious over the Persian if all of us, we are going to go to hell anyway. Does it make a difference anyway? So here you see Muhammad, how he flipped apart. Muhammad, when he tried to make himself look like a Jew, and the Jew, they rejected him. So Muhammad, he decided to kill all the Jews and the Christians. Mm -hmm. Muhammad is like Obama. When he go to Egypt, he's a Muslim. He sit with the uh, Christian church. He is a Christian, he holds the Bible. He sit with the atheist, he make fun of the Bible. He sit with the homosexual, he is a gay. That is Muhammad. He changed his skin, the bent in the location. And now we need to ask you, as long as this is the, you know, we are here. When the Quran says we are people of the book, do we have a book? As in Christians, yes, you guys have a book. What is our book? The Bible, the Gospels. What the Quran says about it, what it says, what is the name? Uh, the name of the Injil. Injil, but is it Injil mm -hmm. is in a Greek word? Injil is a yes, it's it's a Greek word, correct? Okay. Yeah. So Jesus, according to Muslims or, or Isa, he was sent to yep. the Jews, correct? Um. 
Oh no, I don't think so. What do you mean no so? You must have you say the Muslim, you must have you say the only messenger who sent for all mankind it was the Prophet Muhammad. Um I, I know Muslims say this. I'm not going to deny this. I don't think mm. there's a Quranic reference that, that explicitly well, states Well, let us go this. to the Quran then, you see? I know your Quran better than your Prophet himself. So, okay, let's see it. All right. You're going to show me what ma arsanak illa rahmatil lil alamin? No, this is, not, this, is, this is not okay. having to do with our topic, you know? Sure, okay. Okay. In chapter 2, verse number 80, uh, 87, Allah, he sent Musa, and after Musa, he sent Isa. He sent it to who? To the Jews. No, okay, right. So, so there is. If you go to sort of South, for example, um, you, you will see verses where Prophet Isa is speaking to the Jews. Mm. But if I'm correct, there is a verse in Surah Yasin mm. um, that talks about some messengers being sent, uh, disciples of Isa. But this is so, a this is a contradiction. This is not a proof. This is a contradiction. This is what I'm sh trying to show you. Actually, thank you for helping me. So. Allah, he sent a book, it's called Injil, which is a Greek language, to a person, his name is Isa, and he was sent to the Jews. So, I am sent to the Jews, but my book is written in Greek. It's like saying, I am sent to the Arab, and my book is in German. This is another okay, mistake. Okay, no, no, but, but, but you have to remember the context of it, right? What is the context? So the context is when, when Jesus was there, mm -hmm. uh, at his time, there were... Uh, there were Jews, of course, but there were also Romans, right? There were occupiers. No problem. Uh, but the Quran confirmed. No, the Quran confirmed uh, that Allah will never send the messenger except by the tongue of His people, and the tongue of the Jews is a, is a, is the Hebrew. It's not, you know, actually they fight, they fight the Aramaic, the Hebrew, they fight, etc. But being forced to, they've been forced to use it. Even it's written in their old uh, old scriptures because they've been forced to. But the Quran confirm, and this is your problem, not my problem, that mm -hmm. we never send a messenger. This is chapter 14, verse number four. We never send a messenger save with his language to his folk. Why? Okay, In so, order so to make it clear is... for them. Okay, so what is the folk of Jesus? Who is uh, the folk of Jesus? Say, sorry, can I just say something though? Go ahead. Uh, right. We, we know that the Romans occupied Jerusalem, right? Um, and there were a lot of Roman soldiers there. Hmm. Are, are you saying that God would abandon the the Romans because they couldn't speak the language or God would uh, I am saying what your God saying I'm not saying what my God saying I'm showing you what so your Quran is saying the Quran is saying we have never sent to save mm. with the language of his folk that mm. he might make them from mm. um can we see the interpretation please for this sure here we go which uh, you want to be Kathir or Qurtubi or Tabari or Jalalain which one you want um let's go to Ibn Kathir please all right so chapter 14, verse number four. Mm -hmm. And this is verse number four. And here it says, we not we sent not a messenger except to the language. Okay, here it says, Allah kind and compassions. Sorry, it's just loading. Give it a second. All right, I will give you time. So you can, you can read it yourself for us. Mm -hmm. No problem. Tell me if the whole text is showing or not. So, because I'm, I'm from my side, it's showing fine. Yeah, can you just zoom out a bit, please? All right. Let's see now. Uh, a bit more. Okay. Um, if you could just move it a bit more to the right, then that'd be perfect. Okay. Okay, every prophet was sent with the language of his people, guidance, misguidance. Only. Okay, mm. Allah is kind and compassionate with his creation, sending messengers to them from among them and speaking their language. Mm. So they are able to understand the message that the messengers were sent with, Allah said, and then the verse itself. Okay, mm. sending them from among them. Okay, so that means that he's going to be from them, which Jesus... And speak in their language. Okay, was Jesus a Jew? Mm -hmm. His and mother was. Yeah, and now, wasn't. now let us confirm more stuff. If we go in the Quran, we will find this. Yeah. The Quran saying the following verse. Chapter three, verse number forty-nine. Isa speaking to the Jews, saying to them. 
I came to you from your Lord, to the Jews specifically, to the Israelis specifically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right, the verse does say that. Okay, so I came, I was sent to the Jews, I was sent to the Israeli, the Israeli speak Hebrew, and then Allah, he decided to choose the Greek version of the Bible, which is obviously, this is the world is known at that time for the Greek one, what Greek one, and Muhammad he did not have an, any idea what he is using. He just chose a word which he did not know what it, what it means, and he claimed that he never sent the messenger except to speak the tongue of his people, and he have to be from the people. So, in order for Jesus to have a Greek book, mm -hmm. according to the Quran, then Jesus have to be Greek, and his people have to be the Greek. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, he will be a messenger to God to the Israelites to whom he was sent. Yeah, I guess you're right. I okay. guess you're right. In the top yeah. of that, look what happened now. Muhammad is no prophet no more. Why? Because the Quran says that Allah he sent him Rasulan Lil Alameen. Correct? To the mankind. He was sent as a mercy to the mankind, yeah. Yeah, he's a messenger for mankind too. Sirajan, Mudiyan, Sirajan Muniran. Mm -hmm. So, yep. uh, so we send you as a light for mankind. But then, when the Quran says in chapter fourteen, verse number four, we never send the messenger to any except his own people. Why? So he can deliver the message to them in their language, in order to do what? To make it clear. That makes sense. So, based on this. Muhammad, if he was a saint, sent as a person, he was sent to the Arab and the Arab only. Mm -hmm. I follow your logic. Yeah. This is not my logic. This is logic of the Quran. I'm just reading your book, my friend. This is not my logic. Mm. Okay. So Muhammad is a fraud. Because, and, the, and the verse is so clear, it says, we never, we never, and he said that when Muhammad was a prophet already, correct? This is not after Muhammad, he died. Muhammad now is the one who delivered this message, saying to him, we never send the messenger. So Muhammad is included. No, this is a very, um, is a very strong argument, actually. Um... I, I don't have an answer for this, but let, let me take this one away with me. Um, and now, actually, we, we are not done. This is, will open more doors for more crazy stuff. Because the Quran mm -hmm. says that Allah, he sent Muhammad uh, yeah. to Mecca and what is around it. Is that correct? It's... <laughs> It is, yeah. I uh, read this. You're right. Okay. That. So, uh, uh, in chapter 6, verse number uh, uh, 62, 92, sorry, it says, mm -hmm. We have blessed the book, which is the Quran, revealed to confirm, which was revealed before it. Actually, this is false translation. Uh, uh, revealed what is between his hands. If you know Arabic, it says here, Musaddiq, الذي بين يديه confirming, believing in what is between his hand. And this is the book of the Christian and the Jews. Mm -hmm. And now he will see here. So confirming the book which is sent before, let us change the translator because this is false translation. Always the Muslim, they, they, they deny and they try to fabricate the translation because when you say what is between his hands, that destroyed the whole Quran. Confirming not what was before it, what is between his hands. You will see all translation, they took the word between his hands. Anyone can take this, take it to Google, and you can see Musaddiqan الذي بين يدي. And by the way, this is this is a very, very bad Arabic. I never heard of somebody saying Musaddiqu الذي بين يديه. What is that? What kind of Arabic this one? But anyway, let it go. So, believing in what is between his hand and to warn what is around Mecca, the mother of towns. Mecca is a small village at that time anyway. And then now actually it's small, it's small. You know, the investment and the money, etc. But still it's nothing. So, uh, 
Muhammad was sent only to Mecca and what is around it. And suddenly Muhammad became a messenger for mankind. And then the Quran says, we never sent a messenger except to the people speaking the tongue of the people. And now that will talk us to the from person. If you remember, Allah, he sent Musa and Aaron to speak to the Pharaoh. That's right, yeah. Okay. Is the Pharaoh from the people of Musa? The Pharaoh wasn't Jewish, um, but like I was men mentioning about the, the Jesus point, because, mm. you know, they lived in Egypt, uh, they had to interact with the Egyptians. Yeah. Uh, so if they were to accept the belief, they would be part of the people of Moses. My friend, doesn't matter. doesn't matter. The Quran says, we never send the messenger except to his people. So Moses will not be a messenger to anyone except his people. So how he is a messenger to his people, and then he go to Pharaoh, invite him to believe in Allah, and ask him his people to believe in Allah too. So that broke what, what Allah is, because the verse before it says, we never sent, correct? We never sent. No, no, like I said, it's a very strong point. Uh, I need to take this away with me. I, I don't have the answer. It's all a right. very strong point. Okay, so until now, uh, I'm showing you things after thing after things. All of them, they are crazy, and all of them prove that Muhammad is a false prophet. So if you remember when you called me, I said, well, he's a prophet. Can you give me a prophecy? And turn to be everything he said, this guy is, is wrong. Right, we, we, we spoke about one prophecy and we spoke about this topic. Here. No, all of them, by uh, the way, are prophecies. All of them, if you, they lead, because Muhammad was not in the time of Moses, correct? He, he was not, no. Okay, so when I say something, nobody knows this is a prophecy, even if it's in the past. If I say how God created the earth, God, he told me, this is what prophecy is, God told me, Prophecies can be about something happening in the future, or will happen in the future, or something will happen in the happen in the past, but nobody knows. Something secretly uncovered. So God informed me, and He told me how He created the earth, as an example, how He created the baby. So by time, people didn't discover how the baby is created. So now you say, oh, Muhammad, he prophesied that the baby is created in a certain way, which is wrong. Like he said, that the, the sperm came in from the backbone of the man and the ribs of the women, which is a crazy. So he prophesied how the baby is made, and time come, and if, if science confirm what Muhammad is saying, that will be a prophecy, but the baby is already made. Muhammad himself was a baby, correct? Okay, so 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 let, let's talk about that one right there, you just okay. mentioned. Yeah. Um, can, can you pull up the verse, please? No um, problem. If we go to chapter, chapter 86, yep. chapter 86, verse number, let us go verse and 6 and 7. Here we go. This is the Quran. Um, and as long you mentioned before that you like Ibn Kathir, we can go to Ibn Kathir. You don't mind, right? Yep, let's go to Ibn Kathir. All Just right. give it a second, it's loading. All right. So we go to Ibn Kathir. And let us see. So he created... Yeah, I'll give uh, it time because it's going to load now. I'm opening it yeah. there. Proceeding between the backbone and the ribs. Hmm. Okay. All right, this is Ibn Kathir. I, I, have, I put it for you on the screen. Uh, let us read together. Mm -hmm. Just give it a second. Okay. Okay, all I can see says, then Allah misleads whom he wills, I guess. And this okay. is another, another thing later we can talk about. Allah, he misleads us he, who he will. <laughs> what a, this is God of Satan. <laughs> okay, right. uh, we, we can discuss this. That's okay. All right, no so read for me, my friend. Mm -hmm. uh, I think you're still scrolling down, so I think it's late. Okay, right. so let man see what he is created. Uh, this is alerting man. Okay, no, that's, I, I wrote it down because we want to go about where the sperm is coming. This is the important for us. Yeah. 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 He is created from uh, water gushing forth, meaning the sexual fluid that comes birth, comes uh, bursting forth from, I can't see if you can just zoom out a bit, sorry. Um, the man and Yeah, just a little bit, sorry. Yeah. 
Okay, thus the child is produced from both them by the permission of Allah. Due to this, Allah says, proceeding from the backbone and the ribs, meaning uh, the loins of the man and the bones, ribs of the woman, which is referring to her chest. Hmm. Hmm. And by the way, hmm. this is false translation. In Arabic, it doesn't say all the loins, it's the backbone. Muhammad, but, but, said, uh, sorry, I'm just a bit confused there. Sorry, give me a second. Okay. Um, proceeding from between the backbone and the ribs. Backbone, meaning the backbone or loins of the man. Okay, so we're talking about two separate people. Hmm. And okay, so he's talking about sexual fluid coming from the backbone of the man and the ribs hmm. of the woman, which is referring to a chest. Hmm. Hmm. How, yeah. in, how in okay. the world this is from God? Because we know sperm comes from the testicles, right? So hmm. No, according to Muhammad, testicles are decoration, like the one you put them in Christmas tree, you know? They are hanged there for like, <laughs> you know, like, like a Christmas light. <laughs> yeah, okay. It's uh, good to see a Muslim laughing, uh, you know, I like it. So my friend, is it from God? Is it really? This is God. This is prophecy. Sorry, what is it? What does it mean? Ribs of the woman. Can we please? Uh, the ribs. What, what you know, mean? if you go yeah. and read the interpretation, it says in Arabic, it says Actually, even here, in the Kathir, he says that. He says, "Ikrama," uh, uh, referring to her chest. In fact, in Arabic, it says The location where the necklace is. You see, like the the what they call it. The uh, there's that there's little little. Uh, Hole. Yeah, the bone. Yeah, yeah. Little hole between the, the top of your ribs, right away in the top. This is where the location of the necklace. When women she wear a necklace, tight necklace, that will be in that location. So according to Muhammad, this is where sperm is coming from. So can you can you just send me the link? Sorry, just I, I apologize. So send me this link. That's my friend, the problem with this website, it doesn't show link. It shows the, uh, I can I can give you the uh, let us say the the website and you can open it from there because there's no uh, like unique link. You know what I mean? I will post it in the chat. This is, I'm, yeah. I'm using the website, it's called wordofallah.com. Word of Allah. You're talking about Ibn Kathir, anyways, right? Yeah, this is Ibn Kathir. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Okay, you can open it any website, any one you want. Yeah. So let me find it myself. Give me one second. Yeah. I post it actually um, in the chat. You can use the same website, Word of Allah. Search for wordofallah.com. <laughs> and then go to chapter 86, uh, uh, verse, uh, you know, from 1 to 10 in this website, it's shown you. Okay, so I'm in Word of Allah. <clears throat> Chapter what, sorry? Chapter 86. Yeah, okay. Word of Allah slash tafsir. Yeah, I, I see you know? it here. Okay, yeah. yeah. Okay. No, I was just double checking. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right. That's it. That there. Yeah. How this is, can be from God? Is it obvious that Muhammad is a fraud? This is prophecy. You see, the baby is made, you know, since Eve, correct? In the past. Look, look, I'm not going to, um, I, I, I don't lie, okay? Um, so I'm not going to sit here and say that this is correct. Um, because it's not. It's not. Y you know what I mean? I respect that on you. Um, so, so I'm not going to sit here and, and try to make up excuses. It's, it's, it's very clear. So why, my friend, you're still a Muslim then? <clears throat> I mean, isn't it, isn't it obvious? I mean, this guy is, is claiming to be a prophet, claiming that God told him this. This is not hadith. We can go over it. We can run over it. We can say, you know what? Maybe somebody put it there. This is the Quran. Okay, how about, how about the teachings? Don't you think at least they're good? You know what I mean? Our friend, I can be a person who speak about being good as much as you want. doesn't make me from God because I can earn respect of people for being good, you know? I can be a person who have my own agenda. Maybe I want to be a king. Muhammad became a king. And, you know, as long as you are talking about teaching, when you say good teaching, what good teaching mean? Um... I would say good teachings mean, I'll give you an example, actually. Mm. Um, charity. Charity. 
Well, yeah. how Muhammad he did the charity? He told them, go and attack the Romans so you can get the blonde girls. Ghuzur room, then Abu Banat al Asfar. Yep, this is true. I, I read this, but mm -hmm. in, in, in the greater context of things, it was in a way to motivate his men. Okay, you, you know what I so mean? you motivate your men by telling them you can kidnap blonde women. Not by serving God. No, there, there are many ways to motivate people, you know what I mean? No, my friend, um, if, actually, if you go, you see the verse, uh -huh. you will see that the person who said to him, don't tempt us by women, Muhammad, he claimed that he is a hypocrite. But reality is... What do you, what do you mean? What do you mean? Well, uh, uh, you know, when, when, when the guy, he said to Muhammad, oh, excuse me, don't tempt me. Don't tempt me. He was asking Muhammad, why in the world you are tempting us to go to war? Those people did not invade us, did not attack us, did not kill us. They never come here. Why want to go there? He did not say because we want to spread Islam, because we want to bring them to... No. He said, attack the Roman, get the blonde girls. So the man who said to him, why you are tempting me with this? To go to jihad for no reason except blonde women. Muhammad accused him to be a kafir, to be a hypocrite. And to be a false person. And, and this was before the Battle of Mutan or after? Sorry, just just. This is when Muhammad he decided to send his messenger to attack, uh, to to warn the Roman, uh, convert or else. And when they refuse to convert, uh -huh. you know, bef actually after uh, before he even he sent, according to the Muslim, not me, I'm, I'm not the one who made this history. Yeah, so, yeah, I mean this is before Tabuk, right? Yeah. This is, uh, and then he okay. decided to go to Tabuk, and he failed. He failed in yeah. Tabuk. He went there. He could not make it. So he was, you know, his the victory he promised was a uh, was a fraud. And if, and by the way, you are the one who mentioned to me that Muhammad he predicted that we will conquer the Roma, correct? Y yes, but but you see, before Tabuk, before he even went there. It was to avenge the Battle of Mutar, if I'm correct. Doesn't matter. This is where you see, Zaid bin I, you see I don't, I don't go by all the history of Islam. I believe all of it is shish kebab. But however, mm -hmm. uh, Muhammad, the one who was happy for the Roman to be victorious, now he want to yep. kill the Roman because they are kuffar, which is very funny and very uh, uh, crazy. In the same time, he is not asking the Muslim to go and attack to 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 spread Islam. In fact, in chapter eight, chapter nine, the same chapter we are reading. You will see that when the Muslims being forbidden to have any non-believers in Mecca, the Muslims they fear they fear the property. You know, read with me, chapter nine, verse number twenty-eight, the same chapter. Oh, who you believe? You know, verily, let us. You know, this translation is very funny. The ad words is not there. Uh, let us go and see another idiot. They make it so long for no reason. Okay, here we go. Oh, who you believe? Truly, the pagan or unclean Najis. This is a very fascist, racist. No, but, but, but sorry, you, you, you're, you're jumping topics. Though. No, no, we are not. I will show you why. We are. Listen. Okay. Oh, who you believe? Truly, the pagans are unclean. So let them not, after this year of their approach to this, uh, 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 of the uh, after this year of theirs, approach the second mosque. And if you fear poverty. Soon Allah will reach you, and right away he says, attack the Roman, attack the Christians and the Jews, kill them. So how Allah will reach you? So attacking the Roman was a solution for money, not for God. No, no, no. You, you, you see, um, from the Islamic perspective, hmm. um, the reason why the, uh, the Muslims attacked um, the Romans was because their client state um, murdered their emissary. Or the missionary sent to uh, convert him to Islam. Let's go by that and let's see how funny is that. So mm -hmm. you send you send the messenger saying either you convert to Islam or I will kill you, and then you expect them to give you a hug. He is the one who is announcing war, convert or else. Aslam Taslam. This is what he said to him. Aslam Taslam. You want to be no, safe? I don't, I don't think this is what he said. I'm not too sure exactly. Here we go. Let said. me show you, my friend. Don't, you know, for me, remember, you are talking to Christian Prince. I'm not a kid. Aslam, Aslam, Taslam. Here we go. And this is the hadith, and you are the one who said, you accept uh, Sahih hadith. That's correct, yeah. Th that's right. the screen load, sorry. Bear with me a second.
And your prophet, he keep mentioning that Aslam Tastam to many people. Always he said that. But anyway, let us go. Uh... I mean, if you if what you're saying is true, okay, then here we then, go. then it's justified. Okay, here but we go. If it's not, then no. Read it, my friend. Here we go. Yeah, read it, read it, read it. And you know, okay. this is the funny. The Muslim they say that he killed him. They killed they, they killed the messenger, but the messenger is Dahil Kalbi. But according to many Islamic books, the Hill Kalbi, he did not die in that no, day. No, no, no. The messenger was Harith, right? No, here we go. In front of you, it says the Hill Kalbi, my friend. So Muslim history is a fabrication. So read with me. So Allah, uh, Allah he sent to the governor of Al-Basra. In that time, uh, Harkulais, whatever his name. He, uh, uh, and he said to him, in the name of Allah, the most merciful, the compassion, Muhammad is a slave of Allah, blah, 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 to uh, Harkalize, uh, uh, the ruler of the Byzantine, uh, blah, 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 blah. I call you to Islam. If you become Muslim, you will be safe. <laughs> Sorry, it's just starting up. Okay. Messenger. Messenger Allah wished they had brought to the governor of Basra, which in turn passed it to Heraclius. Okay, that's the governor. That's right. He read it out saying, in the name of Allah, the mercy, the compassionate from Muhammad, the slave of Allah and his messenger to Heraclius, rule of the Byzantium. Okay, I got it to stand. If you become Muslim, you will be safe and Allah will be reward if you turn away. Then you incur wrong action of your subjects, O people of book. Come to a proposition which is the same for us and you. And the witness that you are a messenger, that you are Muslim. So sorry. Mm. Mm. Become okay. Muslim, become Muslim, you will be safe. Otherwise, I will kill you. This is a threat. This is not a message no, of no, peace. It doesn't say I will kill you, but, but it is threatening for sure. No, no, my it's, friend. It's Aslam Taslam, Arabic is my first language. Aslam Taslam, that's what Muslim they say. Become Muslim, you will be safe. Otherwise, we will kill you. That's, okay. it, that's it, you know. Mm, so this is what you're saying it says in Arabic, right? It's in Arabic and English too. You see, Aslam Taslam, this is this is literally transla translation for the Arabic. Uh, become you a Muslim. In the English, become in the English, a Muslim. Says, oh, sorry. Continue. Okay. Become a Muslim, be become safe. Safe from what? The guy, he's the king. Uh, and Allah will double your He's not a word. refugee. You know, like he coming to your door saying, please help me, give me, you know, give me shelter. This is a king. He's so... safe from God. Safe from God. No, my friend, because the action God. after that, he went to fight them. What's safe from God? Isn't it the Quran says, fight those who don't believe in Allah in the last day, chapter 9, verse 29? We just read it, my friend. Fight those who don't believe in Allah in the last day, and what is forbidden by his messenger. So what is the problem with those people? They don't approve the messenger. What we do with them? We send them a book says convert to Islam, or we send them a book says Aslam to Islam, which means convert or die. And the only way to stay alive is to pay us jizya. So if you reject that choice to pay jizya like a slave, be under our command, then we will kill you. Choose one. Okay. And as you see, you are the one who mentioned to me that Muhammad, he motivate his men by the blondie girls. Mm. If I am a decent person, speaking of God, I will never mention, hey guys, they have a blondie girls there. <laughs> Let's go and get them. I will say, let us bring uh, the religion of truth to everybody. What does, what the girls have to do with this? And you will see, as long as we are talking about women, how how women and sex involve very much in Islam. You are the one who mentioned, well, don't Muhammad have a good teaching? Is this a verse? There's a verse about women she can offer herself to the Prophet. What does this have to do with God? Let's see this verse, please. Okay. Remember, I am supposed to be a Prophet of God. And you are, you know, you want to believe in me. And then I say to you, if you have a wife or a daughter or anything, you know, she likes to give herself to me so I can, with my respect to your family, I don't mean to insult. Uh, you know, if your wife, she likes to give herself to me, that's good. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. what what does this have to do with God? How how that serve God? You know, this, this is nothing to do with God. Chapter 33, verse number 50. Muhammad suddenly, he start counting how many women he can sleep with. And as you see the whole town, 
all the verses. Look how long, look how long this verse. Your wives, well, you are sending him a verse that he can sleep with his wives. Isn't it too late? And then you will find that all of those things are privilege to Muhammad. And a believing woman, she offer herself to the Prophet to do nikah to her, which means to F her. The translation says to marry her. Where is the word marry? Show me in Arabic. I want to see it. It says she no, offers no, herself. Nikah doesn't mean that. Nikah means um, sexual intercourse. This is nikah true. means yeah. sexual intercourse. Thank you very much. So, mm -hmm. and women, she is offering herself. And let me ask you now. Is it true that if your prophet, his eyes fall into a woman, her husband must divorce her? Um, I, I think I've studied this. Yes, I think I've heard it. I've come across this. Hmm. Yes. So? Yeah. You, you mentioned to me, what about his good teaching? Is that a good teaching? That I'm a prophet of God. I go to your house and I respect your wife. I see your wife. I like her. I say divorce her so I can have her. What does this have to do with God serving? Isn't it, this is against the teaching of God? If you go and read the Ten Commandments, what God he gave to Moses, it's clearly saying that adultery, fornication, wishing a woman she is not yours, is forbidden. This guy, he claimed that this is a privilege to him. And all his privilege is about sex and money. Here you will see, this is the book of Al-Qurtubi, and I'm showing you the reference in front of you. And I'm going to use a Google Translation. And I will post short link for it. This is Shia library, by the way. But this book is not a Shia. Qurtubi is a Muslim Sunni, correct? Hello? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, now I hear you. So I'm saying mm -hmm. the website I'm, I'm using now is a Shia library, but the book is a Sunni. Shia library have all books. Who, you know? who who is it? Who 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 wrote the book? Al Qurtubi. Okay. You heard mm -hmm. of Al Qurtubi, right? Yeah, he's okay. Sunni. Volume fourteen, page number two twelve. Mm -hmm. It says here that. But which book? The, sorry, which book of his? I apologize. Tafsir Al Qurtubi. Tafsir. Okay. The okay. Tafsir, okay. Volume fourteen. That's the Arabic version. There's no English, I think. Uh, mm -hmm. Page number two twelve. It says here it count for you uh, the privilege of Muhammad. He says. And what is was lawful for the Prophet as a privilege? 16. The best of the booty. Second, to take the fifth of the booty. And then and 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 then uh, uh, and increase more than four wives. Even Muslim have only four wives. Muhammad he have unlimited. There's no limit. And then to F a woman, beloved Zilhiba, which means uh, she say, I offer you yourself, he F her. Number six, to F a woman without her parents' approving, approval. All of them is about sex. Number seven, to F a woman without dowry. He do not need to pay for free. Number eight, to F around the Kaaba or during the Hajj. Number uh, 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 10, and if his eyes fall into a woman, which means he like her, it is a must for her husband to divorce her so he can F her. And this is what happened with his son from adoption Zaid. Let us use a Google translation. Read carefully. This is a prophet of God. You know, this is a prophet of God. Let us go to number no, 10. No, you're, 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 you're right. I, I, I remember studying this now. Okay. Okay. So um, what okay. kind of a prophet? He have a good teaching, as you said. If his eyes fall into your wife, you have to divorce her so he can sleep with her. Why is he is he short of women? I mean, the guy, he have tons of wives at home. At home. You see what I was told? I remember um, having this discussion when we were studying. Hmm. And the imam said, even though this was a, a privilege, uh, he did not utilize it. What do you mean, you know, he... He did practice it. He never, the... he never did it. This no, no, he no, no. He, take, he took Safiya. There's a verse about it in the Quran. In the chapter of Al Ahzab, you know, Zayd, when Zayd, he finished with her. And the Quran... You mean Zainab? Zainab, we went to Jahshia. Zainab, the daughter of the donkey. So... No, no. You, you see, with her, the situation was 
the prophet came into you know there's multiple narrations but the, the, the more authentic as the scholars say is the one that he came in to the house uh, Zaid wasn't there hmm. uh, the prophet says something um, what he said what he said remind me uh, I don't remember off top of my mind he said my heart my heart is flipped for you he flirted with the women correct yes it, it okay was, yes. so what do you mean he did not practice that he went to the house of a married woman she is married, she is not separated, she is not going through divorce, she is in the house of the husband. He go and he is there, why? Because he is the father of the husband. You see, you don't, you don't enter a house of a man when the, when the man is not there, correct? Uh, this was his son at the time, you know? Thank you. So no, because this. he is the father, he was allowed to enter, so he was given a trust, trust he don't deserve. When I trust you because you're my father to enter my house when I, my wife is alone, you are there for a reason because you are my father. What this man he did, he took advantage of being the father, go into the house of the husband when the husband is not there, and now he started flirting with the women. And this is what the Muslims say, flirting. I believe they, they are really sleeping together. Because my friend, if a woman, she is really a good woman, and let us say, God forbid, your wife, she is home, and your father come to visit you, and then your father flirt with the women, your wife. How angry your wife she would be. She would be very angry, don't you agree? Yeah, she would be. Mm -hmm. But she is not angry, she is proud. You know? And then the interpretation says that when Zainab, she told him, for Fatina, it says, for Fatina Zaid. So he got it. So right away he went to Muhammad and he told him, you know what, I don't like her, I want to divorce her. So now he knew that they are sleeping together. No, I don't think they were sleeping together. My friend, um, what is the difference between somebody flirt with a woman she is married? Isn't it, this is a sign that he is willing to sleep with her because already he disobeyed the good ethic of God. What is different? Isn't it your Quran? Isn't it your prophet? He says that adultery is adultery of the eye and the tongue. Correct? Correct, yeah. He okay. Did say this. So he mm -hmm. committed adultery. I mean, the guy who speak about, <laughs> you know, speak about doing good stuff, he is the last one to follow the good stuff. So Muhammad himself, he says, it is Allah verily has fixed the very portion of adultery which a man would indulge in which of necessity must commit, which is very stupid to say, because now he is making it, making it a, a, as a, as a, a, as a, like destiny, the adultery of the eye, the lustful of the look, and the adultery of the tongue. So Muhammad, he, you know, he, 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 he said it clearly that this is adultery of a tongue, adultery of an eye, because his eye saw the woman, correct? And she was wearing sexy clothes, and now he did adultery with her his eye because he wished a woman she is not his. He have a lost for look at the women. And then the result of that, he committed adultery with his tongue. But this is what the Muslim says. Maybe. We don't know what happened for real. This is what the news says. And not only that, if you go to Al-Qurtubi, you will see that Zainab, she claimed that after that, Muhammad, he flirted with her each time her husband, he tried to sleep with her, Allah, he make his penis swell. Is that correct? Uh, I have never heard of this one, to be honest. Can you show me this? Okay, let us see. Let me show you. Hold on. Give me a second. Mm -hmm. You see, the, the Christian, they say that Muhammad have no miracle. Here we go. He have a miracle. Allah, he made the penis of the husband swell. You know? Uh, let's see. So who said who said the Prophet had no miracle? We Christian we say here the Quran says that too. The Quran says he have no miracles. <laughs> but in the Islamic tradition his book, they say that he have. But let us see. Uh let us see what the what the Muslim they say. What what the Zainab she said. Mm -hmm. And and for miracles, 
there is the um well, why you search this one up sorry i'm not sure if you found it yet uh hadith on Zina, but yes the splitting of the moon we will go to that and you will die laughing just wait okay just and also it. the feeding of many people yeah. yeah here we go this is tafsir al qurtubi the same book i gave you the same pages you can read it says أن زيدا تورم ذلك منه mention in a hadith coming from Zainab that she said that that Zainab Zaid he his penis is swell each time he tried to get close to her <laughs> are you sharing your screen sorry yeah it's in the screen okay give it a few moments sorry let me pause the link I will pause the link to in the chat and you, everybody can use Google Translation, you know. So uh, uh, here it says actually. Uh, yeah, I can see it now. Okay. It says here, "Amsa uh, Zaid fa'awa ila firashihi." So uh, Zaid he came at night. He went to his bed, uh, and then Zainab she said, and he could not do it to me, which means he could not f her. And nothing make, make him not to be able except Allah. He forbid him. He could not do it. And then he says, So Zaid, his penis, swell. <laughs> so imagine now, we have God become a pimp. This woman, she is lawful for the husband, not lawful for Muhammad. She is married to the husband, not to Muhammad. And the husband is the son of Muhammad by adoption. And now Muhammad, because he liked the women, even he forbid adoption. It was a turning point for Muhammad. Suddenly, adoption is forbidden. Just because he want to have the women to sleep with her because the Arabs start saying, what the heck, this guy when is going to sleep with his own son, wife? So this is why the Quran says, you are afraid what people will say? And you are telling the husband to keep his wife? Which means the Quran saying, you Muhammad, you are being hypocrite now? You are telling them, you are telling the guy, keep your wife when Allah, he inform you that he want to give him, when you know, this is yours, take her. <laughs> what is the ethic? This is God or this is, this is a scam? And let me pause the link for everybody. So anyone can use Google Translation, including you, when you speak Arabic. But you can feel free, you can take it to any sheikh in the mosque and let him read for you. Okay. Mm -hmm. You see, in the in the in the Old Testament, we have a story yeah. of a of a, of, a, of David. Uh, you know, uh, he. Uh, took a wife of somebody else. He sent him to war, so he yeah. will die, and he take. But you will see that the Bible condemn him. God, he punished him. God even yeah, says to him, "Don't just... build, don't build the temple for, for me. Uh, your 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 money, your hand is full of blood." So God condemn him for that. Not only that, God he punished him. Even the son he have from that woman, he died. Here we see the opposite. Muhammad, he want to take everyone, women, by blessing of Allah, encouragement of Allah. And you will see that Aisha, she said, Inni ara rabbuka ila hawaka, ya Muhammad. Allah, I see, Aisha, she said, uh -huh. uh, I see that your God has to your temptation, your de sexual desire. Mm -hmm. To your convenience, yeah. Uh -huh. So Aisha, she noticed that Muhammad, He's a fraud. You see, I, I wanted to speak to you about two things here. Mm. Okay, um, it's actually three. So, so first of all, I wanted because you, because you're an Arab, right? Right. Um, I'm guessing you're born a Christian as well, mm. right? No, we okay. don't, we don't believe in as a Christian that we are born. We are believe that we are born again. Born again mean you can be yeah. born of a Christian family, but does not make a Christian. You know, you are mm -hmm. going to be Christian if you understand who is a Christ and you accept Christ as your savior this is called born again go ahead but but what, what I mean is that I'm, I'm guessing that you lived your whole life uh, in 
Yeah, yeah, I understand. You know, okay, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so now you've read the Quran uh, in Arabic, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you? I, I've been told, obviously, I don't speak Arabic. That it's a, a lot better in Arabic. Um, in English, I I always said, uh, it's not a very coherent book. You know what I mean? My friend, what you just said, what you just said, what you just said, to prove to me that uh, the Quran is stupid. Let me let me explain to you. Tell me. Mm -hmm. Uh, the Quran is in Arabic, and in Arabic is way better, correct? This is what I thought, yes. Okay, but isn't it your prophet, he said, that Allah, he sent him the Quran in seven ways or seven letters? Mm -hmm. Okay, what, uh, is the, yeah. what is the reason? Muhammad, he, he claimed, what is the reason behind saving the Quran in seven ways or seven dialect? I don't know why. Because people cannot, and can, cannot comprehend the Quran. So imagine you just said something. I find it very funny. I'm not making fun of you, but I'm making fun of Islam. That the Quran in Arabic is better. But as you see, the Quran in Arabic is worse because Allah, he need to write, rewrite the Quran seven times. In order to make sure, the first sure. Quran, in order, in order to make the first Quran clear. <laughs> but 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 you know as an Arab when you read it is it my friend he made it, it to the Arab my friend listen this Arab the seven Quran are in Arabic too right so Allah he needed to write his book seven time in order to make it clear and until now it's not clear so what kind of an author he made a book and the Muslim they say that the Quran is amazing it's amazing to the point we need to rewrite the book seven times in order to explain the book. And after writing the book seven times, nobody understands the book. <laughs> you, you see, you're referring to the transmitters, right? Warsh. Uh, I am not referring, no, I'm not Talat. referring to any of this. You know, actually, even Muslim, they say those things that are different. But, you know, but just to show you how stupid this religion is. Mm. The Muslim, they say to us that the 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 seven ways it just a uh, dialect like you know like you say the I say za or you know but it's not true as an example. No, it's not true. You're right. Yeah. So if you go in the Quran, where the verse says was shamsu tajrili mustaqarin laha. the sun run into its own course. Hmm? Uh, chapter 36, verse number 38. Here in Arabic it says, in English, and the sun runs on what it is fixed course. Is that clear? It runs, right? Yeah, the okay. sun runs on its fixed course. Let us go to Ibn Kathir. And now you have the page from your side, you can open it. Yep. Let me just open it myself. To make it easier for you to not to wait. So what was the verse again? Chapter 36, verse number 38. 36, 38, thank you. All right. Here it says, "Was laha," and the sun runs into a fixed course of uh, for a term, right? But in different, yeah, um, but, but in different reading, it says, "Was la laha," the opposite meaning, totally. And the sun runs with no fixed course of term. <laughs> so, which one of them? One saying the sun run into a fixed uh, uh, course, and one saying the sun run with no fixed course. So this is not different uh, dialect. This is way. This is the opposite. 
We are not talking right, about meaning, the Fandek no more. Meaning that it has no destination. It does not sit in one place. Rather, it keeps moving night and day, never slowing down mm. or stopping. As it, it, well, so this is the opposite of the verse. The same verse in different recitation is totally the opposite. One says it runs. The other one says in, in, uh, the, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to a station or that to rest. And the other one says it doesn't run to us. Uh, rest. So how this is, can be a different reading? Are you showing both readings on the screen, sorry, or not? It's in the front of you, my friend. It says here. Here we go. Read it. I can see the one says, and the sun runs with no, no. fixed course for okay. No, read the first one. And لِمُسْتَقَرٍ لَهَا You know, here we go. And its fixed course is beneath the throne of Allah. Here it's go down, it says. This is the verse. لِمُسْتَقَرٍ لَهَا On its fixed course for term appointed between two brackets means it has appointed time and it will not go beyond that. Then if you go down, it says the opposite. And the sun runs with no fixed course for a term. Here, the sun runs with fixed or course of a term. Which one of them? Okay. Hmm. Yeah, it's a problem. This is not a problem, this is a joke. There's no way God, he says this uh, both. And the Muslim, they witnessed that Muhammad, he said both. So Muhammad, he forgot what he said. He just add here, la, and that make it no. Here, he forget the la. So when the Muhammadan, they say, well, you know, different dialect does not mean different Quran. That's a lie, because this is totally the opposite. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see what you're saying. So my friend, after all of this, I showed you. Isn't it, this is enough for you? Be honest with me to leave Islam. You know, it's a tough thing to say. You know what I mean? Doesn't matter how tough it is. is isn't it more no. tough to be is to stay? With my respect to you, it will be more tough on you. You are smart. It's more. It's more tough on me to be called to call myself a Muslim when Islam is for for obviously for a stupid one. Which one is more tough to say? I today and decide to become smart. This is madness. This is stupid. This is can't be from God. I'm out of here. It is tough to say that, or it's more tough to say I'm going to stay Abdul. Following a madman, a stupid man, he says stupid things. Which one is more tough? Mm, okay. I, I agree. I agree. So did you, do, you, do you agree to leave Islam, my friend? Mm, yeah. Yeah. I'm so happy for you. I praise the Lord that today you call me and you decide to leave Islam and you are free from the garbage of Muhammad. Now, as long as you decide to leave Islam, my duty as a Christian is to invite you to accept the Messiah as your Lord, as your Savior. What do you think about Christ? <clears throat> I've read the Bible um, before. Okay. Um, in fact, uh, I've studied it for a while, actually. Um, I, I, I don't know. I, 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 I find it difficult to believe, you know? Why it's difficult to believe? To believe, believe in what exactly? What is difficult? Okay. Um, okay. Let, let's start with the concept of... Okay. Jesus was not prophesied in the Old Testament. You see what I'm saying? Who said that? Uh, the Jews say that. No, that's not true. I've, I've read the Old Testament. Okay. Uh, I, I don't see Jesus. Well, you can go right now. You can type in uh, in Google. You, you do not need uh -huh. my help. Type yeah. prophecies about Jesus in the Old Testament. You will find at least 360 something prophecy about Jesus in the Old Testament. And some of them, they are extremely powerful. And as long you are saying, uh, the mm -hmm. Jews did not see that. So how the Jews, they are the one who welcome him in Jerusalem. They shout in his name. 
and why the believers, the first believers, who they are Jews, believe in him. If there's no prophecy about him. But they were a minority, right? Who said that? Who said so? Who said so? You guys say so. I mean, was no. he not crucified? They were unable so doesn't matter. To doesn't matter. The rabbis, they are the one in charge. Yeah. The rabbi isn't the one in charge. And they were able to make the crowd in that in that area follow them. And the Roman, he did what what uh, what uh, what what the rabbi want. But you will notice in the same time that the Bible tells us that thousands of people believe in Jesus, and mm -hmm. thousands of people they listen to Jesus and they love what Jesus do. Actually, we have something that's called the 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 the, uh, the Palm Day, when Jesus entered Jerusalem, thousands yeah. of people they were welcoming him. You know, right? It was like a, a victorious person coming into the city. So obviously, there's a lot of people believe in him, and now. The majority of the Jews are Christians, actually. You see, after 2,000 years, after Jesus, the Jews in this earth is not even 20 million. They are all nations that go in war, all nations get killed, you know, everybody. Uh, but the, the only faith is never increased, but only decrease is the Jews. Why? Because Christianity took most of them and they become Christians. And as you know, Paul, he was a Jew, right? All disciples uh -huh. of Jesus, they were Jews. Even the Quran come from that. So when they say nobody believes in him, that's a lie. Secondly, imagine you are a person who was existing at the time of Jesus and you saw amazing miracles he can do, which nobody can do. Uh -huh. why, why you will not believe you a believer? Why somebody he can re you know, resurrect people from death? Nobody will believe that he is someone special. Why hey, somebody? You, you tell me this because, you know, the, the, the Jewish people. As you claim, they they saw this, right? So why did they not believe in him? They did. They did. The rabbis, they no. did not believe in him. My friend, who said that the rabbis did not believe? There's many that are, they believe, but there is the there is the there is big names, let us say, who they want yeah. to lose their authority. You know, there's always, uh, you know, one day I was looking for a job, and uh -huh. I apply even for a taxi driver. Imagine, I'm a person yeah. of degrees, but because you know you need to pay for your food, right? And nothing wrong with working doesn't matter what the role or as long as it is uh, it's not hurting people you know taxi driver is fine I will work taxi driver so I applied the response is you are overqualified but I know why he refused me what you are overqualified I mean I'm going to take to drive a taxi what a big deal but the manager there he said to himself this guy he have a degree but that my degree today we will get him inside the company tomorrow he will become the manager so there is always somebody is afraid you will take his place. So when the rabbi, they notice how Jesus be loved by the people, they felt the risk. They are losing their place. People don't listen to them. So they have to get rid of him. As simple as that. So when you say they did not believe in him, that is not really not true. Especially all the disciples are Jews. And the top of that, Jesus, he did miracles between the Jews and even between non-Jews, like the Aramaic people, who they are around. So, uh, believe is a matter of something personal. Uh -huh. but the reason you gave me is not a reason. As an example, I will use your reasoning. So, how come the Jews or the majority did not believe according to you? Well, how come the Jews today, the majority, believe in him? So, if the, if the majority is the one who decide if you are right or wrong, well, the majority today are people believe in free sex, smoking, drinking, the majority, correct? No, no you see, the, the reason I asked this question wasn't because of this. It's because um, of two reasons. Um, I've heard that Christians um, often, and, and I have to be honest, I have to go back and, you know, read the Bible again. No because, problem. Because, um, you know, when I read it, I read it from a, you know, Muslim perspective, you know what I mean? I understand. Um, but, you know, when you guys talk about the Old Testament, like when I read the Old Testament, the New Testament, I would see the prophet in places he shouldn't have been in. You know what I mean? No, um, I don't know. This is why. Okay, so Christians often, you know, you guys say that um, Isaiah 53, 5 hmm. is referring to Jesus, correct? Right. Um, but I was watching a, a video where a rabbi was uh, explaining that this isn't referring to Jesus, 
but it's talking about the the nature of the Israelites in general. Well, we got uh, him, we got embossed. You can watch the same rabbi. I think you are talking about two evil singers. This guy's an idiot, you know. Mm -hmm. We, you know, I, I made videos about him, many videos, and everybody knows that this guy is a, is a is a is a liar. You know, as an example, this guy, uh, they ask him if Muhammad is a prophet or not because he's a hypocrite. Uh, yeah, how come? Uh, how come you Jews? I made a video just uh, it's, it's still in my channel actually. I did not delete it. You can watch it. Uh, how come the how come the Muslim they say that Jesus is the Christ? Remember the, the as you said, this guy he don't believe that Jesus is the Christ, correct? Yep, they okay. don't. So they ask him how come Muhammad he think that he is the Christ? He did not answer. He did not dare, and he starts saying the Muslim the believe in the front Messiah. He's the prophet for them, and it doesn't matter. It's not a question. The question is, is he a Messiah or not? And then he claimed that the Muslim do not believe that the Messiah is from David. But this is absolutely false, and we show the difference. So this guy is not a legitimate person even to listen to. Honesty is honesty. You see, when you talk to me, I don't take a side. I'm an American person by having an American passport. I serve in the USA Army. If you ask me about Trump, I voted for him. I say he's dumb. If you ask me about Biden, I say he's stupid. I don't take a side. I say as it is. If somebody in my chat, he's an admin, he says something wrong, I am all over the place over him. So I don't take a side except the truth. So when those people, they say something, it's not even convincing to their own people, in case you do not know. You know, we believe that Israel, and maybe in 15, 20 years from now, they will have a huge number, you know, big number, which is going to change the format of Israel from this nation of the Jews to be the nation of the Christians. The Jews are coming to Christ in a huge number. And those what Jews, do you mean now or back in the now days? and before? Now is even more. You know, if you go right now and see how many Christian schools open all over Jerusalem, how many you will not believe it. Uh, and who is the teacher? He is an ex Jew. Who is the minister? He is an ex Jew. Who is the doctor? Who is the professor? Ex Jew. So they are afraid from Christianity, but they are not afraid of Islam because uh, Islam is not convincing to the Jews. Islam obviously hate the Jews. Christians, they are the only one who say we love the Jews. We don't hate them. So Christianity is very attractive to the Jews. Islam is not. So the Jews, like this rabbi, they made Christianity number one enemy to them, but they fail miserably to convince anyone. And you can watch their videos and watch my video, and you will see that this guy, he come with stupid things, which is not true. As an example, when the, when the Old Testament says that the virgin will give birth, this guy, he says, the, the translation of the Christian is false. It says a young woman will give birth, but this is stupid because if, if the sign is, it's a sign. If the sign is a young woman give birth, well, all young women, they give birth. <laughs> there's, there's millions of them every day. So uh, well, where is this prophecy? Where's the reference? I made a video about it. You can go watch it, you know? Mm -hmm. So okay, I'll check that uh, out. Uh, yeah. So so when uh, uh, when when he say that the Messiah uh, uh, or the Christian they say that the uh, a young woman she will give birth, when in fact it is it says a virgin because it's a miracle, you know. Not every woman can do. If I, every one, if women they can do that, that's mean all women can do that. This is this is not a sign. This is not a miracle. So he lie and they lie. Uh, when they say it is not a virgin, if it's a young woman, that is actually even against the Bible. Why? Because how God he claimed that I'm going to give you a sign, which is a miracle, and the sign is a young woman she will give birth. No, and but then, that wouldn't make sense. I agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he lie about it because that will not be a miracle and that will not be a sign. My mother, she gave birth, she was young. <laughs> she must be Mary then, you know? And I must be the, I must be the Messiah then. So this is stupid. So, uh, 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 you know, when those people, they try to refute, they are bankrupt. The same as the Muslim, they try to refute us. I don't see really any different. You know, if, if you, if you want to go, you try, you try always to find how much legitimate is what they are saying. You know? Just think about it. Don't listen to the Christian. Don't listen to the Muslim. Don't take a side. 
Don't listen to the Jews. Just think carefully and you investigate. You go search. You know, the Hebrew is there. The dictionary is there. You open the dictionary, you read it. And then if the word, if the word mean uh, 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 what they say, that's mean they are right. And the Christians are lying. If not, then the Christians is right. No, that's fair. Okay, I... You see, my friend, everything I, I was with you, I showed you reference one by one. Yeah. Right? So when the Jews, when a Jewish rabbi, he says like in Isaiah 7, that this is not about Mary, she is being a virgin, we laugh because that will destroy even the verse meaning. For God, he will not make you promise that a young woman will give birth, for that will go to a million of women, and then how we will know who is the Messiah. It have to be an amazing miracle. Something never happened before. Or there's only one Messiah. There's no two Messiah. There's no three Messiah. There's no four Messiah. So if it's not about a, uh, not about a virgin, it's about a young woman. There's, then there's no prophecy, and there's nothing said there. For all Tell young me. women, any woman, she is young, you know. Mm -hmm. And the word young is very flexible. You know what I mean? No, I mean I, I agree with the explanation. It would it make sense? Um... But okay, I need to, um, I can't make a decision on this now, as you can imagine. No, my, to... my friend, that's okay. Well, I, for me, I, I, I do my best to invite you. Feel free mm -hmm. to, to communicate with me if you like to go. To go, if, uh, go read the Bible and, uh, you know, you can call me anytime you wish. I'm so happy for you now that you decide to leave Islam and you are free from Muhammad and his madness. Can you just clarify one thing, sorry, for me? Go ahead. Um... <clears throat> Okay, you know, in Islam, we have the, they have the five pillars, right? They have what? So Muslims, Muslims have the five pillars, right? Uh, Shahada, Salah, Zakat, Sum, Hajj. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, you know, they pray five times a day. Do you guys as Christians have an equivalent for these things? You know, first of all, you cannot limit believing in God in one, two, three, four. That is a false uh, teaching. And I will tell you why. Because the Bible, you know, like when, when, when they asked Jesus about uh, God, about, uh, you know, he said to them, to wish to others what you wish to yourself, that is the book. That is the book. That's the law. So it's not one, two, three, four. It is if you are really being as God he wanted you to be or not. So one, two, three, four does not make any difference for me. If I follow all those steps like the Jewish rabbis, who they are so conservative, they don't touch a food if touched by a human being other than the Jews. They don't touch a food if it's touched by a woman. She has menstruation. They are very, 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 very strict in many things, but all of them, they are silly. And Jesus, he described them. He says, well, you know what? If the cup inside is so dirty, you, you, you swallow it, you drink it, no problem. But if little thing outside of the cup, you complain about it. So we don't want to be like the Muslims who follow point one, point two, point three. We follow the Holy God. And the Bible says, be holy like your father. So when you are working in that direction, you are following all the points, not point two, not point one, not point three. He is holy. You are ordered to be holy, which means you are not perfect. You commit sin. But you fight hard in a, in, a, in, a, in a direction to be holy like your father. And this is what Jesus is about. Whoever believe in me and I will live. Believe in me mean anything Jesus said, anything Jesus did, anything Jesus he wanted us to be. Not point one, not point three. You know, Islam is a stupid religion. You say Shahada, you are saved. That's stupid. That's why Jesus, he said the opposite. He said, not everyone says to me, Lord, Lord will enter the kingdom of my father, but the one who do his will. So you can say Shahada as much as you want. You can repeat things as much as you want. And actually Jesus, he said to us clearly, don't pray like those hypocrites who repeat words and they like to pray in the corners. So we do not need to pray in the corner, go and go to your closet and pray in the closet. So nobody will see you except your father in heaven. So Jesus, he forbid us from being hypocrite. Jesus, he forbid us from being following Shahada. He order us to walk his step, not to say words.
But did Jesus say what you just said at the end? You know about don't don't pray like you know um, showing off. Did, did he say this? Because this is a very good teaching. You yeah, like I mean? don't, uh, 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 you know don't pray in the corner. Don't play you know like uh, uh, let me let me pull the verse for you. Uh, yeah, please, because this is what we what they do. You know what I mean? Like you know a Muslim once asked me. Why you yeah. don't see you, you know, uh, uh, like, you know, why you never said I'm going to go to pray, you know? And if you uh -huh. go right now, you know, you see my, all my videos, I never said I'm going to go to pray, like, but do Christian really pray or not? You know, does that mean Christian they don't pray? We pray, but we are forbidden from bragging about it because simply those who do that, they are the hypocrite. They want to show the people that they are praying to God. I'm going to play for you Matthew chapter 6 mm. so you can learn from Jesus who is Jesus not from me I mean who can teach it takes, uh, who, who sorry it takes a long time so what, what is no, it Matthew no Matthew chapter 6 Matthew chapter 6 you know and I don't know if the sound will come to you now if I play it let me know if uh, if the sound is coming to you Matthew 6 do you hear the sound or take not? heed that ye do not your alms before no, men no, to okay do this my, my friend uh, uh, a mute Skype, mute Skype, yep. just for you know, uh, 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 and watch the chat. And when people they say to you, unmute. Uh, actually, when 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 the sound of the Bible uh, stop, unmute, and you will be talking to me. So uh, okay. uh, mute Skype and uh, uh, unmute you too, so you can hear it. And we will play Matthew chapter six. Be seen of them; otherwise, ye have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Therefore, when thou doest thine alms. Do not sound a trumpet before thee, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But when thou doest alms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth, that thine alms may be in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray, standing in the synagogues, and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut to thy door, pray to thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions, as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be not ye therefore like unto them. For your Father knoweth what things ye have need of, before ye ask him. After this manner therefore pray ye. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory for ever. Amen. Amen. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. We will stop here. You will notice right away that this is the opposite of the teaching of Muhammad. One hundred percent. They love to pray in the corners. They love to show themselves. They even put a rag on the top of a car. They go and they pray in the middle of the square. I remember when I was a kid, I visited a Muslim child in my age. Uh -huh. When I go to his house in the cold winter, his father, he opened all the windows. So the neighbors will see through the balcony that he is praying. And I say to the kid, why your father opened the windows? You know, so cold. And then I learn from this kid a lot, a lot of tricks. The Muslim they do. In the month of Ramadan, mm -hmm. uh, when we, we we go to his house, we eat cookies. You know, we are kids. We eat cookies. Uh, we drink tea. You know, uh, yeah. And then now we want to leave. And then he says, stop, stop, stop. 
and he grabbed some salt and he put it in his, in, on his lips. So why you do that? He could not answer because if he move, if he talk, the, the salt will fall down from his lips. And then I asked him, what do you do? He says, because now people will see that we have, uh, uh, you know, we were e eating and our, our lips is not dry. <coughs> so put salt, so nobody will know that your lips will be dry and people will think you're fasting. I said, how do you know that? He said, my dad, he do it. My mom, she do it. The whole family do it, you know? <laughs> Once I, his father was sitting in the couch, he was hitting his head with a rock, little rock. I was, this is really crazy. Why he's hitting his head with a little rock, little tiny rock. Mm -hmm. And that caused a dark spot in his head. Uh, so it looks like he prays a lot. Huh? <laughs> uh -huh. So I asked him why he's doing that. Well, I'm just a kid learning, you know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so he said, so people will think that he is, uh, you know, this is to leave a mark in his head. So that, you know, like supposed to he pray a lot. Uh, yeah. Okay, brother, listen, I, <clears throat> I really appreciate the, the time. Um, and thank you for, for showing me what you showed me. I think it's very clear now. Uh, in fact, to be honest, I was told um, not to call you specifically um, because apparently um, you are one of the Dejals, you know, so... It was a pleasure to speak to you anyways. So they, they, they said to you, I'm one of the liars, right? Yep. Mm. One and, of the fitna for the Ummah. And does, um, it, does it turn to be this way? Did I lie to you about anything or everything I, I said I showed reference and, and prove? You, you did. You did. And and yeah, they were the liars, you know. So yeah. It's very unfortunate, but thank you very much for your time. Well, my friend, I'm happy to have you here, and I hope you can, uh, if you know a sheikh, if you know anyone who would like to call me, so you can watch and see what will happen, you know, feel free. Mm. No worries. Thank you very much. Have a nice Thank you. Day. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Well, let Ooh. us pray for this gentleman, you know, that he will accept the salvation of Christ and uh, he will turn to the truth and the truth will set him free he is now free from islam but still he needs salvation and for me i do my best people they have a choice people they can accept people they can reject this is their business but as you see everything we say we show the proof we make the muslims read it we don't make speeches everything we mention is from their books i think i will <laughs> i will stop for today <coughs> my my <coughs> my throat hold on You know, I was drinking coffee too much, and that's what happened to me when I drink too much coffee. I love coffee, uh, <clears throat> but sometimes it's not good. <clears throat> so I'm going to stop here today before I lose my voice, and I'm very happy for our friend. Um, I did not really ask him his name, but anyway, whatever his name is, uh, we are happy for him that he left. Uh, Islam and uh, let us see how many Muslims will leave Islam today after watching this video what do you think how many how many a per, how many person they are decent they will see the reference which we show on the screen they will examine the reference I encourage all the Muslims to examine the reference whatever we show you whatever we give you it have to be an Islamic website, it have to be Islamic books, it have to be Islamic reference, it have to be Islamic interpretation, not ours. Examine, my friend, and then you will see. Can I talk to you? I'm a Muslim, my friend. Learn Islam, no problem. Uh, but maybe not today. You want to call me next time I go live on air? Hmm? I will take one more call, let us see. But my voice is gone, honestly. <coughs> Hello? 
Yes, my friend, you are live on air. Are you a Muslim? Uh, sorry, we already spoke. Sorry? Sorry, I already spoken to you. Oh, you spoke to me before? Sorry, I don't remember. Okay, so you are a Muslim or not? No, 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 no sorry, we just spoke. I, I've left the religion. I literally just spoke to you right now. Oh, you are that person who spoke to me right now. <laughs> sorry. <Yeah. laughs> you I, see, I, for I just, me, I don't, I, I, don't, I don't look really about who is calling, who is talking. You know, I mean, that's why I said I don't know his name. Because I, I I forgot to look at uh, the name on the sky. All right, what do you want to say, uh, my friend? No, no, I just texted you to say please don't use my name. That's oh, okay, all right, no problem. You see, your name is uh, your name is in preserve, and uh, this is your life, my friend. I respect that. Thank you for calling again. And yeah, remember, nice. I want you to go and read Matthew chapter six again. Take your time and look at the wisdom of Jesus. Amazing teaching, and look at the garbage in the Quran. <laughs> and then you decide which one is really a person he can he can make a better person of you you know it's up yeah. to you okay I, I won't look at that book anymore but I, I will check out the bible all okay. right take care my friend Thank god you. bless you take care all right and please pray for our friend here he asked me not to mention his name oh uh, <clears throat> i will respect that i thought this is a new muslim trying to call or something you know uh but he's the same person uh, so anyway, uh, obviously he's using his real name. Uh, do we have any Muslim want to say anything? All right. So thank you all for being here. May the Lord bless you. And I hope today we have a very good time sharing the truth, giving education. And remember... Uh, we are not here, you know, we don't hate Muslims and we will never hate them. As you see, if you hate them, you will never win souls and you will not save them. We save Muslims because we love to save them. We believe they deserve to be in the kingdom of the Lord. We believe that the Muslim don't deserve to go to hell. And those who you want to save them is not the one you hate them. The one you hate them is the last one to think about saving them. So Muslims, they might think that Christian prince, he hate them. Well, this is what they lie to you. The Quran says that, that the Christian, they hate the Muslims, the Jews hate the Muslims. But in reality, is the opposite. For God, he loved the world. He sent his only begotten son. God, he loved the world. Everybody, white, black, Asian, Whatever your ethnic, whatever your language, whoever you are, you are a child of God. And we are the only one who believe that God, our Father, is our Father. And here you see how our Lord, how humble He is, that He is God who created this massive universe. Yet, He is willing to give us a name we don't deserve. You are a child of God. You pray to God, you say, My Father, our Father. How beautiful it is. While the Muslim is a slave of Allah, Christian, every Christian of us, women or man, is a child of God. You are black African, you are Asian, you are white, it doesn't matter. The Bible says there's no Greek, there's no Hebrew, there's no free, there's no slave, for all is one by Jesus. I mean to that. So we pray that more Muslims will come to Christ and more Muslims will see the truth and the truth will set them free. With this, I say thank you. And don't forget, please, to, to, to support those in Ukraine. We told you about the church there. And we gave you the link before, maybe I should post it here again, to support them, to help them, they need your help. Do good as your good Lord. For he is good, and only God is good. And those who follow him, they do good to follow him. Thank you. Support people of Ukraine. Support those people who they are poor, become homeless, lost their houses. For time will come, and you yourself, you need support. Don't be selfish. Think of others. Think of Muslims. Think of Christians. Think of Hindus. 
Think of everybody need help. For God, he use you to be a hand who give help to those who need it. God, he manifests himself through you. Help them. And remember, I'm not asking you now to make a donation to me. I'm asking you to make a donation to the Ukrainian. And the link we posted in the previous video, you can watch it. There's a church in Ukraine. They are helping the poor and they are collecting donations for those who care to help. Thank you very much. May the Lord bless you. And we will see you again. Christ is Lord. Islam is false. And we prove it every day. I mean, again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. The people of Mecca were pagan. Quran is mentioned if this book was from other than God, they would have found in it many contradictions. If a book is without contradictions, that has no bearing on whether it comes from God or not. I've had phone books that are inerrant, but I certainly don't think God gave them. <laughs> that we believe without understanding. The brother asked a very important question that most of the scholars say that listening to music, watching movies, and most of the television programs, they're haram. So how can we have fun? Let me tell you, brother, at the outset, that having fun is permitted in Islam as long as the fun is halal fun. <laughs> that the standard narrative has holes. In the prophet tells us because Satan or the devil sleeps over our nostrils. Those who oversleep and not pray Fajr on time, Satan urinates in their ears. I really do think Jesus was crucified and that he really was dead and buried. He, he thought that he was a son of God in the sense that he was specially chosen by God. I think Jesus really did think he was going to be the Messiah, the future king of Israel. I mean, that is, after all, why they crucified him, 